Usually, senior day is a day of reminiscing. That could be the ball game, and look at the Crimson Hawks. They're all amped up. Well, today, it's a day of revenge. The Gannon Golden Knights are in town and have no intention of backing down after a loss to California. Uh, play action pass. He's going deep down the field for Kawan Scott, and he's open. Kawan Scott gets the pass, and he's trying to break the tackles. He does, and he is going all the way for the touchdown. Huge pass by Harris to Kawan Scott. The Knights plan to once again upset the Crimson Hawks, but IUP has other plans. It's picked off by Matt Moat, and he's going to take it to the house. After a loss to Slippery Rock and a win over Clarion, the Crimson Hawks remain in the playoff contention. Offense back out on the field. Williams on the read option. Look at the space. Lenny Williams. That's what he does. Touchdown, Crimson Hawks. On the last home game of the year, IUP intends to soar their way into the postseason. It's the Crimson Hawks against the Gannon Golden Knights. Coming up next. There, but he decides to go end zone and finds Drew Carswell. Just to the near side, has a seat. Big block coming and won't pick east. And Finnegan will throw. He backs up and it's a screen pass. And has it's going to look to throw. It's a double move and Carswell's open. He hauls it in. It was just nine short weeks ago where we opened our season here at George P. Miller Stadium for the IUP Crimson Hawks in Kutztown. Fast forward and here we are, the 2015 season about to conclude here at home, and we welcome you into the Crimson Hawks Sports Network pregame show. With Eric Cormos, I'm Josh Hill. We're elated to have you with us for, like I said, the final regular season home game for the IUP Crimson Hawks. Eric, let's begin our pregame show looking at what everybody's been talking about over the past couple of weeks. The regional rankings, they were released on Monday, November 2nd. You take a look at the region rankings and IUP had jumped up to number six in that poll. It's a big move for IUP and you look at the changes this year at the NCAA instituted the region actually now has seven teams that qualify for playoffs. The first seed uh, gets a bye that first week so IUP sneaks in uh, this week now at number six as you mentioned Josh so need to keep that forward momentum go going keep going and Slippery Rock also is another team from the PSAC that is in that regional rankings for playoffs. Gannon jumped out of the regional rankings after their loss to California, but we'll wait on that. But IUP was able to get to number six because of what they were able to do on the road at Clarion. A 28 to 14 victory, IUP doubles up Clarion. They were battered and bruised, the Crimson Hawks were, but that was a really solid win for IUP to go and uh, defeat Clarion, who's had a tremendous year so far. Yeah, nice road victory. And you look exactly, you talked about Josh. Clarion's been a big surprise. They were seven and zero. They've dropped a couple games in a row out of Slippery Rock and to IUP. But you look at, uh, uh, freshman running back Shannon Jackson stepped up in place of Chris Temple, rushed for 167 yards, and IUP able to come out of there with a 28-13 victory. And they even trailed that game at halftime, 14-13. So defense did a nice job of shutting down Clarion in the second half. Penalties kind of derailed the Crimson Hawks' effort in that game at Clarion. They jumped out to a 13-0 lead, but then the penalties started to, to fly, and uh, it was just not good for IUP. They were able to come away with a victory. Gannon, on the other hand, they had a tough game against Cal U. Uh, they were down early, they were never able to rebound, a lot of turnovers, and Liam Nodler, their star quarterback, was injured in that game. Yeah, you touched on it, Josh. Nodler got hurt, hurt his knee, was questionable uh, in terms of coming into today's action, but you're right, six turnovers, including four interceptions by Gannon a week ago. They fell behind 35 to nothing in about the first 25 minutes of that football game, and got a couple second half scores to make the score look a little bit more respectable, but that game was really over at halftime, and it really kind of encapsulates what's been thus far a disappointing season for Gannon. So we talked about what IUP and Gannon did. Let's see how it impacted the PSAC Western Division standings with this PSAC standings. SRU has been at the top. Slippery Rock has been there all year long. One conference loss. IUP's right with them. Gannon, the PSAC West preseason favorite, has dropped three conference games this year. Yeah, Gannon's been up and down. It's been a bit of a roller coaster season for them. You talked about it. They were picked in the preseason poll to win the PSAC West, but 
a couple three-game win streaks sandwiched around a two-game losing streak really kind of damaged them in terms of that. But you talked about the PSAC West standing. Slipper Rock does sit at the top with one loss, but a Slipper Rock loss today against Clarion coupled with an IUP win here today would give IUP the outright PSAC West title. So we're going to take a quick break here on the Crimson Hawk Sports Network pregame show. We'll be back from here on the field to go over starting lineups and get a look at what the seniors have been able to do here at their time at IUP. So we're just getting started. It's an IUP football day. We'll be right back on the Crimson Hawk Sports Network. It's hard to explain. It just became home. There are hundreds of majors and programs, bachelor's degrees to PhDs, small classes and faculty that really get to know you. Amazing internships and everywhere, programs that help to find the job that is right for you. It's what IUP is about, a commitment to your success. See it for yourself. Visit us, Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Find your success. Welcome back into the Crimson Hawk Sports Network pregame show. We'd like to thank our hardworking men and women of our crew for putting this on here today. We're going to continue with our pregame show here, Eric, as the fans, or the band rather, makes their way out onto the field behind us. We'll start with the IUP Crimson Hawks offense. Look at that offensive unit there in the top five of the PSAC in rushing offense and also in total offense. Very nice balanced attack for IUP. You look at last week. Leading rusher Chris Temple out with an ankle injury. Freshman Shannon Jackson stepped up, 167 yards rushing. And you look at quarterback Lenny Williams. He's that dual threat looking for his fifth consecutive game with over 100 rushing yards today. We're going to spotlight Lenny Williams a little bit more in our IUP team report here today, but the Gannon offense, they're an average unit, but they still have a lot of veteran playmakers on that side of the ball. Three seniors in particular you want to pay attention to. The quarterback, we touched on him a little earlier, Neil Nodler, or Liam Nodler, excuse me. He's Gannon's all-time leader in pass attempts, completions, yardage, and touchdown passes. In addition, running back Brock Jones, very talented senior running back, set the all-time single-season rushing record a year ago for the Golden Knights. And then senior receiver Destin Ham, the school's second-time all-time leading receiver in receiving yards and career touchdown reception. So a very balanced attack led by three seniors. Yeah, so we look at both offenses. Let's look at how they compare statistically here in our offensive comparison. Both teams score around 35 points per game. Pretty solid offensive units. Yeah, all around, very solid. But what you're going to want to look at today, that matchup is going to be that IUP defense surrendering just about 20 points per game. Gannon giving up around 30 points per game. So we should see some points put on the board. Just pay attention to how well uh, Nodler is able to move around with that banged up knee. You talked about the IUP defense. Let's look at what they will bring out here today. They're starting IUP defense. The injuries have been a big force that IUP has had to deal with, but they've done a good job forcing the issue, taking the football away. Yes, they're second in the PSAC in terms of forced turnovers. And remember, they've played one less game than everybody else. They started their season a week late, and you see a lot of sophomores and freshmen making contributions, especially in the defensive secondary. And so that's something to keep pay attention to as well. And then you look over the last four games, IUP has forced 40 tackles for loss. Mm -hmm. So something to pay attention to moving forward today. Can they disrupt that, uh, that Gannon offense and get into the offensive backfield? The Gannon defense is another veteran group, and we look at a standout linebacker for the Gannon Gold Knights. That's Joshua Weichel. Recorded his 200th career tackle against Cal last week. Pretty good player for Gannon. Yes, another one of those senior leaders for the Golden Knights. He has five double-digit tackle games though so far this season, so keep an eye on him in the middle for the Golden Knight defense. And now we'll look at how these defenses compare statistically. Uh, both teams are on the right side of the turnover margin, and what I mean by that is they're both on the plus side of the turnover margin. Anytime you can do that, you're on your way to winning football games. No, absolutely, Josh, and that's been something that IUP the last four to six weeks has really stepped up on the defensive side of the football. And Gannon, they've had some injury troubles on their side of the football in terms of defense, and they've been up and down uh, last week against against Cal they gave up 260 yards rushing which does not bode well when you talk about facing the Crimson Hawks with their number one uh, rushing attack in terms of the PSAC well Eric we've set the table it's time to eat IUP and Gannon coming your way right after this it's senior day on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network squad deep at Miller Stadium Walton would throw, looks left side, it's intercepted, and Dorian Lane is going to coast into the end zone. Teron Gibson, as mentioned earlier, a huge catalyst on this IEP defense. 
a third down and five for Chase. Snaps the ball with two seconds left on the play clock. Back shoulder throw, and that's a touchdown. Here once again, we're going to set up a screen. It's picked off again. Jordan Bats, look at the move. Look at the speed. Bats is just tripped up. Rye's going to look deep. Has a man. Has a chance. Eric Williams, interception, playing center field. The snap is to be to McVay. McVay on a screen. McVay's going to take it to the corner. Touchdown, IUP, Sean McVay. I fell in love with the campus, with the people, with my IUP life. See it for yourself. Visit us. Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Find your success. Tails, all right? Would you guys like Gannon? Gannon is a visiting team. Would you like heads or tails? Tails is the call. Tails, it is. Gannon, you've won the toss. Gannon won the toss. You want the ball? You want to they want to receive the ball. What would you like to defend? You want to kick away from the scoreboard? You want to kick it this way? Kicking to the east. Thank you very much, Chris. Chris Barber. Wow, he has uh, been all over the place today. Eric, but uh, Gannon won the toss. That's one thing that Coach Ryzicki said. He said they like to take the football because the way they start games are very important. And Gannon, a team that scores a, a lot of points on offense, or IUP it does as well. But uh, we will have our keys to the game here at some point throughout the, the first quarter here. There's a lot to get to and a lot of different scenarios, but it's pretty simple. A win for IUP today gets them a share of the PSAC West. A win, coupled with a slippery rock loss. IUP's in the state game. Pretty much all you need to know. Well, the Crimson Hawks are in a position that every team would envy at this point in the season. They are in control of their own destiny in terms of postseason play. You touched on it, Josh. They need some things to happen, but the PSAC West title is not out of reach. And don't forget, next week they have to go on the road all the way across the state to take on Westchester if they do not make it to the state championship game. So a difficult road ahead still. But the number six seed in the Division II Atlantic region that puts them in the playoffs and an outside chance with a win and coupled with some losses of teams in front of them you could end up hope hosting a playoff game here in two weeks so if you're IUP you definitely need to keep moving forward because you are in control of your own destiny at this point and two losses if you suffer a third loss that's that's going to take you out of contention for postseason play. Gannon is taking the football on a 50 degree day it's cloudy and it's windy the wind does swirl a little bit at times that could have a little bit of a bearing on this football game sean bowling handles the kicking duties for the iup crimson hawks and back deep to receive for gannon is brandon mansell and mike zanders the talented defensive back in the hit squad as the crimson hawks refer to it are coming out we're underway on the crimson hawks sports network with space Gannon is chopped down by Takai Turner, and we'll take a look at the Gannon offense led by quarterback Liam Nodler. He's a superstar, and he has been phenomenal all year long. Did suffer an injury last week at California. You look at Nodler, 6'7", 235, big frame. Quarterback Gannon's all-time leader in pass attempts, pass completions, yardage, and touchdown passes, and also uh, a few weeks ago set the Gannon all-time all-purpose yards record as well. So a talented athlete. See what he can do here as a senior leading his team into IUP. Hand it off to Brock Jones right off the bat. And Jones is up the middle. He's got a couple of yards on the right side. But Gannon as a team, they like to pass the football. They've been a pass heavy team so far this year. And you look at uh, what they've done through the air. Gannon averages 270 yards passing offense. And you look at wide receiver, senior wide receiver Justin Ham. Look for him to be the favorite preferred target of Nodler this afternoon, number seven. It was a gain of four on first down, and that's the backup quarterback, Zach Phillips, in the football game. So Nodler was in for play one. Zach Phillips keeps it on the read option, and he's got nowhere to go. So a loss of five, and Gannon is backed up with a third down and long scenario right off the bat. Not the start that the Golden Knights wanted for sure. No, certainly not. And you look at Phillips, you mentioned him coming into the football game. He did throw a couple touchdown passes a week ago in the road loss, or excuse me, the home loss to Cal, but that was coupled with three interceptions. But he offers a little bit more ability 
more mobility with his legs than Nodler. Phillips is in the game right now for third down and long. Straight drop, looks right side, has a man there, and it's almost intercepted, but it's not. Allen Wright had the best position on the play, and Gannon will be forced to punt the football. Joe Subicki was the intended receiver, and here comes the punting unit for the Golden Knights. That's a dangerous throw by Phillips. The ball hung up in the air for a very long time, trying to hit his receiver on the far side line. But a nice job by Wright getting in there and knocking the ball away. And now your IUP, nice start defensively, three and out for Gannon. So we see this interesting punt formation. California did the same thing. Two punters are back for Gannon to punt. And they use Mullen there. He will boot it away. So he had a little bit of a running start. And it's down inside the 40, where we'll see the IUP offense for the first time, led by the favorite to win the PSAC West Freshman of the Year quarterback, Lenny Williams. Yeah, Williams comes into this football game. He's IUP's leading rusher. He's looking for his fifth consecutive game of over 100 yards on the ground. A dual threat quarterback. He can hurt you in the air and hurt you with his feet as well. The IUP rushing attack is something we've touched on all season long because they've been phenomenal. They average over 311 yards per game on the ground. Play action pass. Williams under pressure right away. He's got nowhere to go, and he's dropped. That's a sack on the play for Jeremy Page on the defensive unit for Gannon, and a good start for the Golden Knights. Lenny Williams had really nowhere to go. Page came in untouched on the blitz. Nice play call defensively by Gannon. Williams not able to get away from Page. Page stuck with him and brings him down, and that's a huge loss. Loss of about eight on the play. Swanique Brown, Walt Pegues, our receivers in the football game. Keeper for Lenny Williams. He has a scene down the near side of the field. Makes a man miss and is dropped at the 35-yard line. So Gannon wins play number one. IUP wins play number two. And a big play for Lenny Williams. He's just a couple of yards shy of 1,000 rushing yards on the year. Gannon does a poor job defensively. They lose contain on the left side of their line. But nice blocking downfield by tight end Kevin Edwards able to spring uh, Williams for additional 15 to 20 yards on that run. First and 10 for IUP. And they will hand to Chris Temple. Up the guts, he swallowed up in the middle. Not much room there. And the talented linebacker Joshua Weichelt was in on the stop and he'll probably be around the football most of the day, the 6'2 senior linebacker. Yep, over 200 career tackles for Weichelt. And also look at Temple, see how he responds coming back from a week ago when he sat out with injury. As you can see, the, the starting five here for the backs and receivers for IUP Temple coming back from that injury. And they hand it off to Temple again. Up the gut, nowhere to go. That time either, Gannon up to the task. You knew they were probably working that read option a lot during the week in practice. And this time it was Chris Dollard, uh, a guy that uh, you really liked in your preparation throughout the week. Yeah, he's a big time player for Gannon, uh, senior as well and is a four-year contributor along that defensive front for the Golden Knights. Temple motion to the left. Williams will cut back, and he's got space, and he'll just duck out of bounds after picking up a first down. So there's the vision you see from Lenny Williams. The play was supposed to go left. He didn't see anything, and he cut it back to the right. There was some space for him. Yeah, he had a lot of space there. You can see it. Gannon read the play very well. And you look at what the defense did there. Trenton Donald did a nice job of cutting off Williams, but Williams would use his athletic ability, stop, reverse field, and get out of bounds, but not until after he had picked up the first down. Matthew Golick, the defensive end, the junior 6-3 loss contain on that play. Here's Temple, right side, nowhere to go for Chris Temple. And Gannon, you know they were looking at this running attack and focusing on stopping the run. They've Done an okay job, but it seems like when they finally start to gain some traction, IUP on this drive has gotten a couple of big plays from Lenny Williams. Well, IUP yet to put the football in the air, and Gannon a week ago gave up a season worst 241 yards on the ground in that loss to Cal. So no doubt they took it as a challenge to come in here and stop the number one ranked IUP rush offense. Williams will throw quickly. It's a bubble screen out to Waltz Pegues. Gannon is there and they make the play. Rico right the second was the defensive back in on the tackle. 
There's another good one. Gannon goes with a bit of an unconventional defense. They play five defensive backs on any given play, which is interesting because in the PSAC, a lot of teams like to run the football. Yeah, it's more of a running conference than a passing conference. But with that reception, Walt Pegues has 20 consecutive games now with the reception every game since he has come into the IEP program. So good to see that happen early and Pegues continue with that streak. It's another third down for IUP. Williams keeps it up the gut and he is close to the first down. I think he may have got it. Good second effort by Lenny Williams. He was stopped but he drove forward and he does pick up a first down. Crimson Hawks are moving fast. Mike Zanders was there from his defensive back position to make the tackle. And you can see IUP, this is what they do in the first quarter of games this season. Quick starts, 89 first quarter points, and well on their way to putting more points on the board here in the first five and a half minutes of this football game. Exactly right there. Temple breaks a tackle up the gut, buries the shoulder, and he's going to be marked just short. What a phenomenal effort by Chris Temple, who's back in the lineup today. Temple, 15 rushing touchdowns on the year. You talked about it, Josh. Did not play last week due to an ankle injury, able to break tackles and put IUP in position. First and, excuse me, second and goal now from inside the one yard line. Rex Pierce is in as an H back. He's going to be lined up to the left side and it's a pistol set. Pegues is the lone receiver. Hand off to Temple. Plunges in, he's into the end zone, touchdown. 16th rushing touchdown on the year for Chris Temple. Crimson Hawks start well and add to that tremendous first quarter scoring, six nothing IUP. Nice to see Temple come back and contribute early on that first series. Between him and Williams, they touch the ball on every single play. And Temple is easily able to get in there for the, from the half yard out to put IUP up. And they go back to Ryan Stewart. I'm sure fans who have followed IUP all season long have known that the extra point and the kicking game has been, well, it's been a disaster to say the least. I hate to say it, but I'm just speaking the truth here. Uh, Slippery Rock, Kutztown, Lock Haven, you, you name it. Number 88 defense, the distance to the goal. Gannon was trying for another block, and that was that was your man, number 88, your, your boy, remember? He was uh, Chris yes, Dollard. Chris Dollard. Yeah, you mentioned about what he did before we came on, about how good he is as a special teams defender. He has two blocked kicks this year, most in the PSAC, so watch for him getting penetration, getting those big mitts up and blocking the kick. The extra point is good, and that's got to be a confidence building. The coach has let up a, a mock cheer. 7-0, we'll be back on IUP TV with more Crimson Hawks football. Students in communications media at Indiana University of Pennsylvania can focus on a variety of areas, including media promotions. Our promotion students learn their skills by working in a hands-on environment, gaining real-world experience. They learn how to use media to promote, produce, and manage events, and how media organizations operate. They create promotional campaigns and help clients pitch their services, products, and events. With excellent classes led by experienced teachers, the Communications Media Department at IUP is perfect for students interested in media promotions. We have so much to celebrate in Division II, but we're especially proud of our commitment to make a wish. Division II student athletes have led a 10-year initiative to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions. Nearly $3 million have been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple. Because we care. Back on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network, there's Chris Temple. 16 rushing touchdowns on the season. Bowling sends it away. Special team tackle made it about the 30, but uh, let's go ahead, Eric, and look at our keys to the football game here in this one because there are a couple of keys that everyone needs to execute here. We'll start next man up because at this point in the season, just about every team's been hit by the injury bug, and really these two teams are no different. They really have to step up. Whoever's in the football game needs to play well. You already saw it on Gannon's first possession. Uh, Nodler started the game, and then Zach Phillips who's in now again at quarterback, has to come in because Nodler hurt that knee a week ago at Cal, obviously not 100% today. So Phillips will throw it out short and slipping on that one was Brandon Mansell, the wide out there, number 21. 
Next key for the game is the number 10. That's referring to the number of seniors here for IUP. And also, Eric, an interesting number. That's how many players have rushed for at least 100 yards under head coach Kurt Signetti. So pretty impressive. IUP has been a rushing football team. 10 players have at least 100 rushing yards. So it's a second down and long. Phillips has to step up. He's got a little bit of space and he slides down to not take the hit from Dorian Lane. He was closing quickly. And our final key is third down because success on third down is going to be very important for both teams. The IUP defense is third in the PSAC and 17th in the country, allowing opponents to just convert under 30% on third downs. And they need a stop right here on a third and nine. We look a week ago. IEP only allowed three first downs out of 14 conversion attempts to Clarion. Let's see if that trend continues here today against Gannon. So Zach Phillips has been the quarterback here other than play number one. So technically Liam Nodler started the game, but Phillips is in the freshman. Nodler, or Phillips rather, has got nowhere to go. And DeAndre Easterling, we talked about how much we liked his performance last week against Clarion. He comes in with another sack. Yeah, that's Easterling's fifth sack of the season. Also seven tackles for a loss. He's done an outstanding job, really coming on strong the second half of this season as a true freshman. And again, another one of those young contributors on the IUP defense. But Phillips, there was just no time for him to do anything as soon as he dropped back, planted that back foot. Easterling was there to gobble him up and bring him down. Justin Weldon also back in the lineup. He did not play last week at Clarion. So he and Easterling combine for the sack. Another punt, and this one's really a short one. Bounces at midfield and takes a nice Gannon bounce. Hits a player, but IUP will get it with pretty decent field position, and they'll look to add to their phenomenal first quarter. And offensively for IUP, you have to be very happy with your starting field position. The first drive started at the 38 yard, your own 38 yard line. Now here you are at your own 44 yard line after a couple of poor punts by Gannon. And IUP. Likely is going to just going to keep the football on the ground and keep running here. And why not? When you lead the PSAC and rushing yards per game and you've got your number one back returning this week in Chris Temple, that's a recipe for success. So already Gannon has not been able to execute their game plan because they were trying to contain Lenny Williams with his legs. Play action pass. Williams stands in the pocket, delivers a strike. Pagis hauls it in, and look at him go. Walter does it again. The big guy. Touchdown, Crimson Hawks. One-on-one -on -one coverage, Pagis runs a slant. Nice recognition by Williams. Pagis is able to create separation from the defensive back. Breaks the tackle and there's no safety behind him to get past, he's gone. The 44th play, that is over 20 yards for IUP. That one of the 54-yard variety. IUP is rolling here on senior day. It's 13 to nothing already. Extra point on its way. The defensive back Foster Resner is not able to keep up with Pagis. Stewart drills it. IUP two of two on PATs. They're playing well, 14 to nothing. We'll be back on the Crimson Ox Sports Network. I fell in love with the campus, with the people, with my IUP life. See it for yourself. Visit us. Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Find your success. Success. We see it every day. Hundreds of majors and programs, bachelor's degrees to PhDs, small classes, internationally known faculty who are committed to your success. Real world experiences to guide you on your career and life path. An alumni network 120,000 strong. I'm IUP President Mike Driscoll. Visit us. Find your success at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Welcome back into the Crimson Hawks Sports Network for Senior Day. We'd like to thank all our seniors on our crew for helping us out all year long. 14 to nothing, the IUP Crimson Hawks lead a 54-yard touchdown pass from Lenny Williams to Walt Pagese, and it was only a one-play drive for the IUP. Crimson Hawks. Walt Pagese, his third touchdown reception of the season. Bowling sends it away in the end zone. Right side return and he'll be
dropped just past the 20 yard line, just shy of the 25. So Gannon, they've got to get something going offensively because the Crimson Hawks are playing pretty good on the offensive side of the football, Eric. You talked about it earlier, IEP 89 first quarter points coming into this football game already with 14 today. And you're Gannon, you're staring at a two possession deficit Barely not even nine minutes into this football game. You have a backup quarterback in. It's important, just if nothing else, just to get a couple of first downs on this possession, build some confidence, and try to switch the momentum back to your side. Phillips hands off over the middle. And that's the backup tailback, Tyler Johnson. So they work, well, I wouldn't say backup, probably the 1A back because they work both Brock Jones and Tyler Johnson. Normally they're in the football game at the same time. Yeah, a lot of discussion and talk about Chris Temple in the IEP running game, and it's well-deserved. Look again, also pretty good success in the first quarter of the season, 73 first quarter points. But Brock Jones and Johnson, nice one-two combination for Gannon at the running back position. Zach Phillips is a freshman, and he's going to put the ball in the air. He's a mobile guy as well. You see him scramble to his right, and he'll throw it away. Pressure closing in on Phillips. He had to get rid of it. Yeah, no time for Phillips to set up. The pocket collapsed early and he had to just throw the football away. And now here you are, you're set up with another third down opportunity for IUP's defense to get Gannon off the field. And let's see if what the limitations are with this freshman quarterback Phillips in this football game. We talked about it, Josh Nodler, 41 career starts coming into today. Obviously he's, he's gonna have more familiarity with that playbook. Gannon already 0 of 2 on third down. We'll see if they can convert one here. Throwing underneath, pass is complete. And that's the wide out Eli Quinter. Pass was a bit behind Quinter, but he fell and made a pretty nice reception. Yeah, ball thrown just behind him, but Quinter did a nice job, stuck with it, and picked up that first down. Now you're Gannon, you can breathe a little bit. You have a first down. Keep the chains moving now, try to move forward. Phillips, read option, shakes a tackle. Running right side, Eric Williams sends him out of bounds hard. He ran into a chair down there. Oh, my goodness. Eric Williams chasing Phillips down, and he's uh, letting Phillips know how he feels. Williams, one of the 10 seniors today, redshirt senior, missed last season, came, comes, has come back this season and made some nice contributions. And that's a physical safety right there. You can see it's the type of play he likes to enforce out there. You see the team speed of this IUP defense. Phillips was able to shake a tackle of DeAndre Easterling, got to the corner, but was still only able to pick up one yard on the play. Another shotgun set, and like most teams, Gannon a spread style of attack. Second down and nine. Phillips has to step up, has a little bit of room, but then Miles Catlin sends him to the turf. And some good instincts by the freshman. He felt the pocket collapsing and tried to pick up some yardage with his legs. He's been having problems with the pocket this entire football game. IEP's defensive front has done a nice job of controlling the pace. Gannon converted their first third down of the game this series with a pass to Eli Pinter. Gannon still with 15 seconds on the play clock. They're up at the line making their adjustments. Play action over the middle. Pass is tipped and incomplete. He was looking for his big tight end there. That's Will Davis, the sophomore, and the IUP linebacking core was there on the coverage. Again, some pressure on Phillips. He wasn't able to set himself in the pocket. He had to move forward, try to hit Davis while he was moving. Davis unable to bring in the pass. But if nothing else, at least Gannon was able to flip the field and get up towards midfield and see if they can pin IUP back deep in their own end with this punt. Jared Morrison and Karch Holland are the punters. Techni technically, Holland is the kicker and Morrison is the punter and they snap it to Holland there and he sends the rugby style punt off the hop. Pagese will take it and pick up a couple of yards and step out of bounds. IUP will get it back. It's first and 10 for IUP. They've put up two touchdowns already on as many possessions in this football game. Senior day here at IUP, also Military Appreciation Day in Eric. It's a Really good timing for the Crimson Hawks, the last regular season home game, about a week out from Veterans Day, so IUP with a nice gesture deciding to uh, honor some of the military personnel and 
the ROTC here at IUP. It just really can't go wrong with that. The yeah, ROTC program at IUP is very big. Students come here from other universities to participate in it. Williams will throw underneath to Schwanee Brown. Brown lunges for the first down and picks it up. So that's what the Crimson Hawks are all about. The quick strike, play action pass to suck the defense in and let Lenny make his decisions. Williams looks more confident when he's throwing the football now. It's part of the progression, the natural progression. After being in the starter, he's getting more reps now. But just looks more comfortable in the pocket and making quick decisions with the football. One thing we didn't mention is that Jorge Vicioso, the senior right tackle, has not started and he hasn't been in the football game at all today. Temple churns his way just shy of the 45 yard line. Give him a couple of yards on first down and Crimson Hawks, you see it's still incredible to see going from two tight ends and two backs all the time to this up-tempo style. Still haven't gotten used to it all season. Well, it certainly worked. You look at in 2014, IEP offensively averaged 25 points a game. This year, a 10-point increase over 35 points. So a very good decision bringing in offensive coordinator Marty Higgins. His system has certainly worked here. Another play-action pass for Lenny, and he's tucking the ball. He's looking to get out of the pocket and then just throws it away. Lenny Williams was pursued there, and he had to get rid of the football. But nice job by Williams. Didn't try to force anything. Able to use his legs, get to the outside, then wise it and stump the ball into the sideline. It looks like IUP might. Yeah, yep. It's third down. Lenny was pursued by Max Owenye, number 68. The defensive tackle was chasing Lenny down, and uh, Max is a big boy, so he had a lot of ground to cover there. The sophomore, 6'2", 320, was trying to chase Lenny Williams, 5'10", 195. That's what the game of football will do. It's a third down, IUP. Straight drop for Lenny. He's looking deep once again. Pagese has a step, and it's just out of his hands. Good decision. Lenny found the single coverage, but just overshot Pagese a little bit too much. You can see the matchup that they're looking for. They're looking to get Pagese in space downfield. Let Williams throw it up and let him go get it. Pagese already with that touchdown reception earlier today. Big play capability for him. But Williams, nice confident throw down that sideline. That's the first time that IUP has not converted a third down so far today. Jordan Spangler will punt. Matt Spiegel was injured. He was supposed to be a senior, but he may get another year of eligibility with, with an injury to, to Matt Spiegel. Spangler, Gannon sends the house. It's an okay punt, high in the air. Takes a really nice bounce, and this will turn out to be a phenomenal punt. It's gonna be downed inside the five yard line, and IUP makes another great play on the special teams side of things. So we'll keep it here. IUP's defense is already out on the field, and they're chomping at the bit to get back out there. They've been doing their job all year long, this IUP defense has. And uh, so much of it has to go to defensive coordinator Paul Tortorella. He's been here for over 20 years. Probably doesn't get as much credit as he deserves, but uh, everyone kind of knows he's the mastermind behind this IUP defense. All right, he's done a very good job. This defense, national recognition this year, top 10 in a couple different categories. See the IUP defense playing run there as Steve Franco was able to tackle Brock Jones. And that's got to be a good approach for IUP. If Gannon beats you through the air, so be it. But they've got a freshman quarterback in, and they're backed up in their own territory. You have to sell out for the run. Absolutely. Gannon's not going to let Phillips probably put the football in the air and put him in a dangerous situation, considering he is just a freshman. They're backed up in their own end zone, already trailing by two scores. Another slow start for the Golden Knights. Fumble there. That was a really problem on the exchange there when I looked at it because I think Phillips was trying to give it away and there was just a little bit of miscommunication. They worked that read option. Sometimes as a freshman quarterback, we haven't seen it from Lenny, but it's tough. It looked like Phillips went to take the ball back on the handoff. Really fortunate bounce there. Unfortunate. Gannon had four fumbles a week ago. They lost two of them. So something that has continued to plague them throughout the season, some turnovers and just sloppy play, but a bad exchange. But that's what happens when you bring in a backup quarterback yeah, yeah. that's not familiar with, with everything that's going on, and all of a sudden he's thrust into playing. Those are the types of mistakes that you find. It is a third down, an eight for Gannon. 
And they're gonna, that's a delay of game, right? Unless they get a timeout. Yeah, Gannon has to call a timeout right before the play clock expires. So let's take a timeout with them. 1.41 to go in the first, IUP up by 14. We'll be back on senior day. Can I go to the sleepover? Lucy, I want you to promise me something. If there's any drinking, I want you to say, no thanks, not my thing. Mom. I promise you, your real friends won't care. Deal? I promise, Mom. They really do hear you. Did you pack your toothbrush? For tips on how to start the talk, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. A public service message from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. Back to the Crimson Hawk Sports Network. We'd like to thank our crew for well, putting up with us, Eric, all season long. I know that's not an easy feat. They did it, and they've done a tremendous job. Haven't heard them complain one time. but uh, At least not to us. Yeah, well, that's probably the way to do it. Uh, back on the field here, it's a third down, and I do want to talk, Eric, in just a little bit about uh, the youth movement for the IUP Crimson Hawks because you look again, and they're a very veteran team. The Crimson Hawks are a bit opposite as far as how their roster is constructed. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Third down and seven officially for Zach Phillips and the Golden Knights offense. Low snap, and it's intercepted to Kai Turner. Intercepted, that's number 17 on the year for the Crimson Hawks, and that Phillips just looked at his receiver the entire way, Turner with a nice play. Turner, very nice job, his third reception of the year. Just read Phillips' eyes, Phillips never took his eyes off of that receiver, Turner steps in and makes the pick. The pass intended for Brandon Clements, never got there, never had a chance, Turner, nice recognition, steps in, and another one of those young players, underclassmen players for IEP. You alluded to that a second ago, Josh, making contributions for the Crimson Hawk defense. Absolutely, and that's one area of the field you don't want to throw an interception. You never want to throw an interception anyway, but you get what I'm saying there in the red area. Sets IUP up in pretty good field position there inside the 20. Williams will keep it on the read option, and Williams is chased and dropped to the turf there. A couple of yards for Lenny Williams, and Rico Wright was there to make the stop along with Matt Astorino. Sean McVay comes out of the football game. He's one of the seniors. It'd be nice to see him try to get in on this, this uh, scoring action. He's only got one reception on the year. That was against California. And second down and about eight, we'll call it. Lenny Williams, three of five. Hands off to Chris Temple. Temple cuts up down near the 10-yard line. Nico Mendieta made the tackle, the linebacker for the Golden Knights. And let's see if Gannon now can make a stop. They're looking at a third down, about four, five years, five yards to go. Let's see what Gannon's able to do here. But IEP, this, again, this is where Williams just becomes unpredictable for the defense. Is he going to keep the football? Is he going to run the football? Look. An interesting look for IUP. They take out the tight and the fullback, and they go with an extra wide receiver, a couple of extra wide receivers, in fact. Sean McVay lined up to the bottom of your screen. High snap for Williams. He has to take it, cuts back, and tries to make some moves on somebody, but Gannon closes in and makes the stop. Coaches are all fired up, and Mike Xanders makes a tackle in the backfield. Give credit to the Gannon defense. They could not afford to give up a touchdown to IUP on that possession. They would have been down three scores. A nice job by Matthew Golick on the defensive line. He held contain on his side, did not let Williams get around that corner, and then Xander came up. Stayed patient and brought down Williams. Nice job by the Gannon Golden Knight defense. Another timeout on the field before the end of the first quarter. So let's step out for 30 and come back with the conclusion of the first quarter on Senior Day. We'll be back on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. It's hard to explain. It just became home. There are hundreds of majors and programs, bachelor's degrees to PhDs, small classes and faculty that really get to know you. Amazing internships and everywhere, programs that help to find a job that is right for you. It's what IUP is about, a commitment to your success. See it for yourself. Visit us, Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Find your success. We are back on the Crimson Hawk Sports Network. It's IUP and Gannon here, the final regular season home game for the IUP Crimson Hawks. And 
probably our final broadcast of 2015 doing basketball in the spring final broadcast here. IUP will send in the field goal unit here. Four seconds to go in the first quarter of play. And Stu steps into this one. Looks like it has the distance, and it does. The kicking game has improved. 17 to nothing at the end of one. We'll be back on the Crimson Hawk Sports Network. Think of the NCAA as a marching band. We wouldn't stop with halftime. We'd be full-time, celebrating student-athletes in everything they do. Okay, so don't think of us as a marching band. Think of us as a spirit squad. Well, just know we're always there for student-athletes. The brain is a remarkable organ. It's almost infinite in its capacity. Its ability to reach its full potential is limited by only one thing, the heart. For if the heart isn't fully engaged in what you're doing, if you have no drive, no passion, the brain will simply go through the motions. Find your success at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Welcome back. Let's jam out a little bit here on the Crimson Hawk Sports Network. Sounds good. 17-0 IUP on top. We want to talk about a premier game here in the PSAC, Eric. Uh, you have a score update for us from Slippery Rock? Yeah, Slippery Rock, as they enter the second quarter, Slippery Rock holding a 3-0 lead on Clarion at Slippery Rock. Remember, Josh, important game for a couple of reasons. Slippery Rock as of right now, would be hosting a, a playoff game in the Atlantic region, and a Slippery Rock win gives them the PSEC West title. However, if they were to fall to Clarion and IUP was to hold on and get the victory here, that would get the Crimson Hawks the Western Division title. Yeah, here's a squib kick. Thanks for the, uh, the live statistics here from the Sports Information Department. Spinning their way, and IUP is up to the task there. And it's getting chippy. It always is chippy. Here's a flag. And this is becoming a rivalry here. Remember a couple of years ago, head coach Brad Rizicki was mixing it up with an IUP coach here in 2013, I believe. And this is a series that these teams, they go at it. So we've got some flags, and we'll sort this out. Referees are conferring. And uh, as they do, now would be as good a time as ever to look at who our officials are. The referee is Michael Quinn, and he's the one that will be making the call. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number four, the kicking team. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First time, first down, Gannon. That's number four's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. So IUP has an unsportsmanlike conduct, and that's the thing. A young team have to use your head in a game like this. You don't want to let Gannon get back into it. If they make their plays, you have to just tip your hat, but giving it to them, that's not an approach you want to take at all, obviously. Well, that penalty now puts the football on the IUP side of the football field, gives Gannon a very good starting field position. Their best starting field position, absolutely. You just saw what happened on the last possession when they had four field position. Phillips threw the interception from the end zone, turned it into three points for IUP. They mentioned Jones. It's another high snap for Phillips, and he'll keep it on the direct quarterback boot. Phillips steps through and steps out of bounds with a flag on the play. So another penalty flag, and um, we'll have to check this one. There's a high snap on the Holding play. Holding, number 25 offense. 10 yard penalty, first down. And it was interesting, wonder if that was a design play call where Phillips had to kind of call an audible mid-play because the snap was high. You really have to wonder if that's what Gannon had called. They get a holding penalty and uh, give back some of that personal foul penalty yardage regardless. Well, anytime there's a high snap, it's going to disrupt the rhythm of the offense. Mm -hmm. And if you're Gannon, you have to put Phillips in a position to succeed. And high snaps are not going to help out this young quarterback. He is a freshman, 6'2", 195. Handed off to Brock Jones. He spins his way up past midfield and into IUP territory. Jamal Everett. Jamal Everett's back in the football game as a defensive lineman, and he makes the stop. IUP, they have a lot of versatility on the defensive line. They've had 11 players who have played, but last week at Clarion, they were absolutely uh, uh, 
taken to the limit, kind of stretched thin because there wasn't many players healthy. They had to activate a couple of players just to, to have enough healthy bodies on the defensive line. Phillips will throw on second down. Pass tip tie in the air. Is it picked? No, it's not. Aquino Robertson had an opportunity, and it was a nice job by the by receiver Robertson. Brandon Mansell to, to tip that ball away from Robertson. Dangerous throw by Phillips into coverage. And once that ball gets tipped up in the air, you don't know what's going to happen. And Robertson not quite able to come down with it. Another third and long situation for the Golden Knights. Crimson, Crimson Hawks are not afraid to play man on the defensive side of the football. So they'll play man and they'll send a little bit of pressure, you would have to think, at this freshman quarterback. Phillips with a straight drop, has to step up, step up again, no holding penalty, that's what the coaches wanted. Jordan Batts would put his arms up in the air as to signal, I was held on this particular play. But Gannon doesn't pick up the first down, nonetheless, it's a fourth down now. And there you see it, yeah. Well, nice job by Moag getting in, collapsing that pocket from his left defensive end position, able to force Phillips to go up the field and slide before he gets to that first down marker. And now Gannon going to go for it here, kind of in no man's land at the 39-yard line. Too far for a field goal, but you don't want to waste this good field position that you have. Absolutely right. Wide receiver Justin Ham has been quiet. He's lined up to the bottom of the screen. He looks that way, but Eric Williams comes in and gets the sack, and the safety says, feed me more. Turnover on downs. Crimson Hawks have the football back. The senior showing out here on senior day. He's been phenomenal all year long. And Phillips forced to hold on to the football. Good coverage. Looked to his right for his receiver, unable to find him. And Williams from that safety position on the blitz gets the big play and forces a turnover for the Golden Knights. Lenny Williams and the IUP offense back on the field. They've been good. 17 to nothing. The kicking game's been much improved too, which is something IUP certainly had to work on. Hand off to Temple. And Gannon is up to the task defensively there. Temple really with nowhere to go. Nico Mendieta made the tackle for the Golden Knights. They've actually done a pretty good job of bottling up Temple. I agree. Thus far this afternoon, you have to wonder, you know, what's the condition of Temple's ankles at 100% today? Is he playing at 80%? But Gannon, thus far, give them credit. Nice job containing. Yeah, Temple, eight carries, only 18 yards, so 2.3 yards per carry. Quick hitter there to Swanique Brown. Tries to duck a man, but is able to pick up a first down. And if Swanique would have been able to break one more tackle, he could have had some real space to run. That's essentially a run play. Look at Brown lined up on the outside. And Gannon's defensive back, A.J. Satcher, gives him about 10-yard cushion. Mm -hmm. That's an easy throw for Williams, and that's a guaranteed six or seven yards. It's basically just an extension of a run play. Another first and 10, and that's been the theme. IUP, all the talk has been made on their running attack, but this is a pretty potent passing attack as well with a lot of viable options. Temple. Cuts it past the middle and then buries the shoulder and picks up another first down. Rico Wright was there to make the tackle. And Chris Temple with some nice running and pretty good vision by number 27. Nice job by Temple. He attacks the hole, gets upfield. Nice block. Very nice blocking, especially from Gabriel Diaz. Up that hole on the right side. And Temple able to get through there and pick up a first down. Diaz is in for Vicioso as well, which is certainly something to mention along with Tony Morgante on that right side. Williams keeps it. He's got space on the far side of the field. Drops the shoulder and picks up about five or six yards there on that one. So Lenny Williams, you hand it off to Chris Temple, you hand it off to Chris Temple, you do a play action, but then one play, you keep it. And that's kind of the style. It's a play that Lenny Williams has to make the decision, not necessarily called in from the booth. Lenny, they give him the freedom to do what he does. And as the season has progressed, you can see he's built some confidence with the coaching staff. You talked about it. But he has that athletic ability. It was a one-on-one -on -one situation with Trenton Donald on the outside, the Gannon linebacker, able to use that athleticism to get around him and pick up good yardage. Another handoff inside the Temple, and he falls just past the first down marker and picks it up for IUT there. 
Chris Temple hasn't been great, but he's picked up some key first downs and has a touchdown run to his credit. Well, the one thing you know, Josh, is that IEP is not going to go away from the run game today. Temple, the big yard, big run of 13, nine carries for 32 yards, but they're not going to shy away from that. Now you can see Luigi Lista Brinza has checked into the game at tailback. If you just joined us, the play of the game has been a 54-yard pass play from Lenny Williams to Walt Pegues. Williams throws underneath it short. Rex Pierce was the intended receiver. And coming into the year, I really thought that Rex Pierce was going to be a, a big part of the offense as a, uh, as a fullback slash H-back type of guy. It hasn't really worked out that way thus far. Right? IP going to that spread offense, the fullback H-back has not been featured in the offense, but Williams had Pierce open on that play to a low throw at his feet, and Pierce not able to scoop it up. Lenny certainly will take the blame on that one. IUP sends in a couple of extra wide receivers, among them Sean McVay, also Isaiah Mims. Trips formation to the near side of the field on a second down and 10. Luigi Lista Brins is in the game. It's a high snap. Quick bubble to Walt Pegues, and Pegues has got nowhere to go. Mike Zanders made the tackle, and you know Gannon was prepared for that because of what Walt Pegues did against the Golden Knights last year with 13 receptions up in Erie last, last season. Yeah, Pegues, IUP's leading receiver. If you take the next two receivers on IUP's roster and combine their total receptions, they still don't equal the output that Pegues has had this season. So definitely the focal point of the IUP pass passing game is the young sophomore. And we talked to Walter during the week, and he said that as a leader on the receiving core, as only a sophomore, he's still as a leader. He really had to step his game up and kind of lead the uh, entire receiving core. Third down and long. Williams will look right to Pegues, but he's got to scramble as he's flushed. Still looking downfield, throws in complete flag down on the play. So once Williams left the pocket, all you know what broke loose and Williams had to throw it underneath. Number 74 offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. We'll bring up a fourth down in a long field goal. I don't think they're going to even consider kicking a field goal here. Maybe they will. Yeah, they will send out the field goal. The IUP offense stayed out on the field looking to the sidelines like, what's the play? But they will send in the field goal and try to go up by 20 here. Stu, Ryan Stewart will kick. Has really rebounded since that game at Slippery Rock. Hate to quit harping on it, but that's just the way of the, the world sometimes. It's a 35-yard attempt for Ryan Stewart. And it's long enough, but I think it's a little bit wide to the right. And no, it's good. It sneaks through. Sneaks him through the right upright. 20 to nothing. We'll be back on IUP TV. know you want family-friendly sporting events. Sporting events where you can be comfortable. And entertained in a positive environment. Watching great individuals and teams compete. With commitment, effort, and good sportsmanship. That's what the Division II Game Environment Initiative is about. Be a part of the excitement and find out why. These student athletes say with pride, I chose. I chose. I chose Division II. Welcome back to the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. We'd like to thank our hardworking men and women on our crew for helping us out all season long here at the IUP Center for Media and Production and Research, bringing you these games this season. IUP will send it away up 20 to nothing. It's a short kickoff. That's fielded. Near side, up the guts, and he's down just shy of uh, midfield. Pretty good return by Brandon Mansell, but uh, the IUP Crimson Hawks offense has been phenomenal. And let's uh, spotlight this offense a little bit more here because Walt Pegues has been great. He had the long touchdown reception and he's had a catch in 20 straight football games, Eric. And of course the running games have been good too. 
Hey, look at Lenny Williams, almost nine yards per carry, leading the PSAC in second in all of Division Two. And he talked about Pegues every single game of his career, all 20 games, 20 for 20 in terms of receptions. First and 10, and they'll hand it off. Up the gut. A couple missed tackles by the IUP defense and some nice running by Tyler Johnson. But look at the storylines. The kicking was one of them. Ryan Stewart has a field goal from 30. He's made a field goal from 35 yards and he's made both his extra points. Well, both losses for IUP this year by one point. Kutztown and Slipper Rock in games that featured multiple missed extra points. First and 10 for the Gold Knights. Hand off to Johnson once again, and Johnson has some space, slips a couple of tackles, and it's down after picking up another first down for the Golden Knights. And we've got a player slow to get up. It's Nick Dubowski. Looks like he's okay. Dorian Lane's gonna come in and replace him now. But it's a couple nice runs by Johnson. Yeah, Johnson comes in, does a nice job. Two plays. Gannon's down inside the 30-yard line. But nice vision by Johnson, uses his blocks very well, breaking tackles, putting in and getting them, building them some offensive momentum here. Justin Hams to the top of the screen. He's been quiet. They work it back this time to Brock Jones. And Stevie Franco wraps up Jones and sends him down after a pretty solid gain on first down. And Gannon taking a page from the IUP Crimson Hawks playbook in the respect that they're pretty run heavy right now. Well, that's to be expected. You look at the freshman quarterback, Phillips being put in. You can see here the Super Region 1 rankings. Shepard undefeated up to 9-0 now as they won on Thursday night, looking to lock up that number one seed in that first round bye. Great option. Phillips has the space, and he's down inside the five-yard line. And a perfect look for the freshman, pulling the football, taking it down. First and goal for the Golden Knights, and they've got a little life here at Miller Stadium. Not bad at all by the freshman. And nice blocking outside by Ham, the senior wide receiver, allowing Phillips to get up the field and put Gannon in good position. Gannon moving fast. Another keeper for Phillips in their time. IUP's not fooled. The senior. Jordan Batts was in there to make the tackle. Gannon tried to get to the line quickly, try to keep this momentum rolling, and we've got a late flag. Something happened here. Something was said. The referee threw a flag here way late. I think maybe some chatting, some talking. So in a first and goal play, Phillips is dropped in the back. After the play, unsportsmanlike like conduct, number 23 defense. Another on. Penalty being forced half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. So at the very least, it gives Gannon a fresh set of downs, and that's another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on the IUP Crimson Hawks. And that one on Aquino Robertson. Moves the ball down to about the three, four yard line, setting up a first and goal as they get a first down automatically on the, on the penalty. Not smart play by Robertson. Something a redshirt junior should know better than doing that. Especially talking right in front of the referees like, like he did. Hands it off to Jones. Is he into the end zone? He is. Well, what's this referee doing here? Okay, he is. He was signaling one second that the, he was down at the one. Then the next second it was a touchdown, and it is a touchdown. So Brock Jones on one of the rarest touchdowns you'll see there because the referee didn't know what he was doing. Call a touchdown. Gannon's on the scoreboard. Gannon. You should have seen the referee on the near side, Eric. I don't know if you saw that or not. Yeah, I saw him. He came running in with both hands up. The far side official had him marked down at about, looked like less than a foot. But the near side official came in very confidently and gave Gannon the touchdown. The extra point is bang through. Gannon's on the board, 20 to seven. We'll be back on IUP TV. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful Ever since I can remember, I have loved theater and I have loved acting. I also have a passion for working with kids with special needs. 
Indiana University of Pennsylvania helped make both of my dreams come true. I'm Trisha Ray Stahl. I'm a 1998 graduate of IUP, and I'm a working actress. I have a recurring role on Fox Television's Glee, and I also work with kids with special needs. IUP, find your success. Welcome back to the Crimson Hawk Sports Network, and a nice crowd here on a pretty solid November afternoon here in Western Pennsylvania. Gannon scored their first touchdown with a little hesitation from the official, but we got all that cleared away. It was the 15th rushing touchdown on the year for running back Brock Jones. And Gannon on the scoreboard. Pegues will receive it from his own end zone. Pegues to the 30. Pegues cuts back to the 40 and is dropped. Wow. Pegues went from 0 to 100 real quick and uh, had a pretty nice return there for the Crimson Hawks. A very nice return up the right sideline by Pegues. Used his speed. And able to create good field position for the Crimson Hawks as they start out at their own 40 yard line. For update here from Slippery Rock. Right now, the 10th ranked Rock up 10 to 7 over Clarion. So that will be a score we continue to watch throughout the broadcast here today. The IUP Crimson Hawks have the football with quarterback Lenny Williams and sophomore tailback Chris Temple in the backfield. And it is Chris Temple on the near side of the field. Someone falls down. Temple breaks a tackle to the 40 and is down inside Gannon territory. Another tremendous run by Chris Temple. And we've got a player injured. Rico Wright is hurt. He looks to be hurt pretty bad here. It looks like a a non-contact injury for Wright. He was coming in and made the tackle and just went down and was able to, unable to make the play in, in obvious pain. I hate to see that, especially from a senior. It's a 20-7 game. It is senior day here at IUP. Perhaps the final broadcast for us this year. IUP has the possibility. It's a... Kind of a long shot, but they still can host a playoff game here in Super Region 1. They have to win this football game. And uh, Wright's going to yeah, Wright's gonna be helped off the field here with uh, his teammates. So let's go ahead and step out for a little while here, come back uh, on the Crimson Hawk Sports Network. We'll be right back. We have a job to do out here today. To be a winning team, you have to work like a winning team. My team depends on me. And my team is 50,000 strong. Looks like a lot of words going into this. This is what it feels like to be part of a team. A winning team. The action team. Get in on the action at actionteam.org. Are you in? Welcome back in. Back into the Crimson Hawk Sports Network on IUP Senior Day. It's Military Appreciation Day, and Rico Wright still gingerly moving off the field. He is uh, off under his own power, so that is at least a good sign there. He's holding his left leg. Could be a lot of different things there, but IUP will get it back. It was a nice run by Chris Temple taking the Crimson Hawks down to the Gannon 31-yard line. And Temple with that big first down run, putting IUP first and 10 at their own 31, or excuse me, at the Gannon 31. Handoff once again to Chris Temple, and he's stacked up relatively quickly. Joshua Weichelt was in on the tackle along with Ryan Davis. Yeah, nice job by Davis, came in and plugged up the hole and was able to stand up Temple. And the rest of the Golden Knight defenders came in and tackled him. But nice job there by Davis and Weichelt. Rico Wright, the guy that was injured on the play, is one of those exports, so to speak. He's from Los Angeles, California, one of a couple of different guys who are outside of the Western Pennsylvania area. Another quick hitter to Swanique Brown. And Swanique's had one of his better games in an IUP uniform. The coaches going to him a couple times, and with the soft coverage, why not? Well, it's easy throw for Williams, and good recognition by the quarterback as well. And Brown, that big frame, able to reach out, extend out the football, and pick up the first down. 
third reception of the day for Swanee. First and 10. Ball rests just outside the 20 yard line. Rex Pierce is an H back in the football game to the right side. Sean McVeigh comes in motion from near to far. Temple up the gut and he's hit and dropped. Justin Brown made the stop and I think Brown came in for right. Am I correct, Eric? That's correct. So Justin Brown, you look, he is filling in for Rico Wright. Brown from Stafford, Virginia, a freshman. Hey, you alluded to it, Josh. Gannon's roster players from California, Texas, Virginia, North Carolina, West Virginia, and a couple of foreigners as well from Canada and a player from Germany. Second down. Temple once again, and the defensive line of Gannon you really have to give them credit. They've done a nice job. I really am impressed with what they've been able to do. Chris Dollard made the tackle for Gannon. Now third down and, a, and less than five. And let's see what IUP does here. They've, they've liked that option read, that read option that yes, Williams yes, has been doing yes. on these third downs. Let's see if they continue with that. Maybe look for one of their tight ends, Pierce, in the football game along with Kevin Edwards. Yeah, too tight in the football game. Pierce and Kevin Edwards. And they also work that passing look off the, the zone read. Big play for Gannon if they can get it. But they can't here because Lenny Williams Keeps it himself and picks up a first down. Gannon really needed that stop here because uh, here with time closing in on the first half, they wanted to try to get the football back and get some points, but IUP is driving in position to put up six more. Your IUP, stick with what works, and Williams has done a nice job on that option, able to get around the outside, get around the defender, Matthew Golick, and pick up the first down, and now you're looking at a first and goal situation. And you see how Lenny kind of attacked Golic to make him slow up just a bit, and then that burst, that quick step just to get around him. That's just that pure athleticism that we've seen all year long. It's a first and goal. Turns and hands to Temple. Flag coming in. Temple dropped inside the five, but uh, penalty flag may bring this one back, and the one referee signaling holding. Holding, number 65 offense. 10 yard penalty, first down. It is a holding penalty on the IUP Crimson Hawks. It's 20 to seven here at Miller Stadium. Final regular season home game of the year for IUP. So this is an interesting scenario. You're first in goal, but the ball's at the 17 yard line. So some ground to travel for IUP. And they'll bring in a couple of extra receivers here. Swanique Brown has been active here at the bottom of your screen. Chris Temple is the tailback. Now under four minutes to play in the first half. Play action, looks for Swanique again, and it is incomplete. Pretty good coverage there by Gann, and that's Foster Resner, and he was step for step. Norm wants the fly, but not bad coverage at all. No, nice job by Resner. Timed his break perfectly, came in and knocked the pass away from Brown. There was contact, but it wasn't until after the ball had arrived. Nice job by Reznor. Seems like Lenny may have thrown that one a touch late also. You probably want to throw that as he's making, the receiver's making his break, but uh, the timing was a little bit off and that gave Reznor the time that he, he needed. Williams is bottled up. Nice work defensively, Mike Zanders, or check that, Matt Astorino, one of the other defensive backs in there, makes the stop in the backfield, and Gannon's starting to kind of sell out for the run here. Called the run blitz on the play. Nice job by Gannon defensively, you can see on the right side of the line. But Astorino does a nice job and gobbles up Williams. You kind of see the scheme there. They've got a guy designated for the tailback, they've got a guy designated for the quarterback, and I think that has to be the approach. Time ticking away in the first half, and IUP's really in no hurry. They come to the line with 13 on the play clock, so they may have to step up their, their pace a little bit here. 2.55 to go in the first half. Temple has it, up the gut. He's driven down by Weichelt. And the talented senior makes the tackle. Gannon will uh, take a timeout. So let's take one with them. 2.46 to go, we'll be back on IUP TV. I did everything right. I went to college, graduated with honors, but I'm just not getting to where I want to be. 
I need to get to the next level. What am I missing? Where are these people going? What, what do they have that I don't? How do I get that edge, that hands-on experience that will put me ahead of the competition? Graduate school at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Welcome back to the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank Director Najee Poles and everybody behind the scenes here today. People not happy with the live feed. That's okay. Message boards aren't happy with us, but we're going to fight through it, Eric. We're okay. 2.46 to go. It's a fourth and 15, and IUP is going to send out Ryan Stewart again for another field goal attempt. He's already made two. Run one from 30 and one from 35 yards. Well, the re reality is, is as you advance, and if you qualify the, for the Division II playoffs, you need a quality place kicker, somebody that you can rely on, because you're going to be playing in a lot of close football games. This one, a 32-yard attempt, and Stu bangs it up. It's a high kick. Does it have the distance? It does, but it's to the right. No good. So that one kind of floated in, and it just missed, sneaking in to the right side. So Gannon has a first down, and they've got 242 to work, so a two-minute offense, only one timeout to go for the Golden Knights, and they're going to have to work down the field here, going to score update from Slippery Rock, 16-7, to the 10th-ranked Rock up on Clarion. So and certainly we'll be keeping an eye on that score throughout the day. Let's see what Gannon allows their quarterback, Zach Phillips, to do. Is it, are they going to let him air it out? We've seen that he can do with his feet. He's done a nice job picking up ground that way, but the air attack has been really struggling thus far for Gannon. Handoff to Brock Jones. And Jones is dropped by Everett. Short gain for Brock Jones, and we've got an injury. Jones may be hurt on the play. I think he is. Nice job on that play by Steve Franco coming up from his safety position on the run blitz, helping out Alvarez to bring down Jones. So we've got another injury timeout, and here's the play. And it happened, there it is, yep. You can see it. So let's go ahead and step out once again. Another injury timeout on the field. It's 20 to seven, Crimson Hawks on top of the Golden Knights on senior day. Jones looks to be okay, so that's good. He was able to get up and run off. You see him running to the sideline, so hopefully he's all right, because he's a big piece of this Gannon offense. So Gannon will have to traverse the field here, working from left to right without one of their top weapons in Brock Jones here, at least for, for this play. Second and 10. Backup Tyler Johnson has been pretty good, though, for the Golden Knights so far today. Phillips is in the gun, and he'll hand it off. Karan Gibson makes the tackle from his defensive end position. And I think Gannon may be just content to try to run the football. Well, that's interesting because you go back, Gannon called a timeout to stop the clock. True. To, 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 to save time to get the football back. And now yeah. here they are with two straight run plays setting up a third down and six. It makes you wonder why did you call the timeout to conserve time if you weren't going to be aggressive trying to push the football downfield. Absolutely. That is a good point here. Gannon's in no hurry. Phillips is in the shotgun. Justin Ham to the bottom of the screen. He's been held without a catch. The very talented wide out for the Golden Knights. And another handoff, this time to Johnson. And Eric Williams closes in and makes the stop. He's going to be a yard short of the first down marker. Eric Williams did make that stop. And... Gannon staying out there. This could be, this could be interesting here. They're backed up deep. We'll see what they do. Oh, they're trying to get IUP to jump off sides. There was a hard count. You could see Phillips with a hard count. So time is ticking down, and this is some questionable clock management to say the least. Eric, here in the first half, I think they may just call a timeout and 
Well, it's Run interesting. It interesting decision for IUP. You have two timeouts left, and you just let 40 seconds tick off the clock. And Gannon, even though they lined up, clearly they had no intention of actually running a play there. My goodness. So Gannon takes their final timeout of the half, and we'll uh, take a look at what's coming your way on the Crimson Hawk Sports Network halftime report because we'll get a preview of the IUP men's basketball season, and we'll give you scores from around the PSAC because the PSAC polls were released here in men's basketball, and we hate to move on from football season, but don't look now, but the Crimson Hawks open up their season next week at the KCAC. And the early preseason ranking of number seven in the country actually received one first place vote in the coaches poll. And you look at Division Two, Josh, in terms of basketball, you look at the number one team uh, in the preseason is Augustana, which is a college in Iowa. And they went on the road last night and beat the University of Iowa in Iowa City on a Impressive. buzzer beater, 76-74. So, you know, Division Two, you, you think about it, but it's very quality team at the Division level. Two level. It is a high level. As evidenced right. by that, and IUP went on the road uh, last week and, and lost their scrimmage on the road to Siena, another Division I program yeah. in the New York City area. Yep. It's a close game. And so you look at Division Two, very good basketball this. all the way around. Gannon's running out trying to snap it as quick as possible. This is like a fire wagon change in pace here. My goodness. Just interrupted our basketball talk right off the bat. I'll punt it away. Nice. Really good rugby punts. It's going to bounce. The Pagese will field it and go. drop Great out of bounds. Great really shot. nice punt and a really nice game plan for Gannon. But speaking of Gannon and men's basketball, the Golden Knights, they went to the Peterson Event Center. An 80 to 50 loss to the University of Pittsburgh. So they were opening up their exhibition portion of the season. And it's an interesting time of year here because football is coming to a close. Basketball season is just getting underway. So IUP has 39 seconds to work with, and looks like the coaches are leaving the building, so they're probably just going to concede, go to the locker room, up 20 to 7. Interesting, though, going back to that clock management uh, on Gannon's last possession, IUP electing not to call the timeout, let 40 seconds run off the clock. If you call a timeout there, you get the football back with one timeout and about a minute 40 on the game clock. Definitely enough time to get downfield and put up some more points, but obviously Coach Signetti comfortable with a 20 to seven lead, just going to the half here at home with a 13 point edge. Talked about Coach Signetti. Let's go down to the field and hear from head coach Kurt Signetti right now. What are too many scoring opportunities in the red area? I mean, we've been down there too many times and haven't gotten enough points. And uh, we've made a couple field goals, but you know, uh, Penalty right there on the six hurt us. Penalty on the defense hurt on the touchdown because they lost about six, seven yards. So we're getting ready. We've got to score touchdowns. But the defense has done well. Defense has done well. We've got to do a good job stopping the run because that's what they're going to try to do. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Thanks. Head coach Kurt Signetti, a couple of adjustments to be made on both sides of things. Halftime at Miller Stadium. IUP is up 20 to 7. And we'll be back right after this. A little voice came on the phone and said, Daddy, when you come home, he said the first thing that came to his mind. I'm already there. I'm already there. Take a look around. Oh, I'm already there. Being there. Pass it on. Did the Crimson Hawks come out on fire? Touchdown to Chris Temple, a long touchdown pass to Walt Pagese, and then Gannon, they had some struggles too to start, but they really found themselves at an interception late, but here you go, Gannon. They were Going down there, Eric Williams had a nice half, but they were finally able to get on the scoreboard here, the lone touchdown of the first half for the Golden Knights there. But the way IUP started the game, you thought, boy, this could be like a blowout, but give credit to the Golden Knights. They have uh, responded nicely, I would say. And uh, before the teams get ready to kick the second half off, let's go over the halftime stats, and we'll start with uh, the team stats here in the first half. Sure, you look at the first downs, IUP 11 to Gannon's 5. 
rushing yards, IUP with 138 on 25 carries. Gannon, 75 yards on 21 carries. Passing yards, this is the big difference maker here today. Lenny Williams, 86 yards for IUP. Gannon, only three yards through the air in the first half and only seven attempts. Total offense, IUP, 224 yards compared to Gannon with 78 yards. Uh, you look at the rushing statistics, Tyler Johnson leads Gannon with 38 yards on five carries. Brock Jones, 18 yards on six carries. And Zach Phillips, our leading rusher, 42, excuse me, uh, 19 yards after a couple sacks he had. And Brock Jones with a touchdown for IUP. Chris Temple, 15 carries, 76 yards and a touchdown. Lenny Williams, nine carries and 63 yards. So both are on their way to eclipsing the 100-yard mark today. Receiving Pegues, three catches for 55 yards and the touchdown, as you alluded to, Josh, the 54-yard touchdown pass from Williams in the first quarter. Swanee Brown, three catches for 31 yards for the Crimson Hawks. So this opening possession of the second half is going to loom large for both teams. You look at the PSAC composite scoreboard, and Eric, your work's not done. Let's look at the scores from around the PSAC and the region as well. Seton Hill 37, Edinburgh 16 in the third quarter in Greensburg. Mercyhurst trailing Cal 17-0 at Cal University. Kutztown 24, Shippensburg 14, Slipper Rock 16, Clarion 7, and Westchester 24, East Stroudsburg 7. So that kick is out of the end zone for a touchback, and IUP will get the football. Like I said, it's a big possession for both teams here because Gannon needs to try to make a stop and get the football back. IUP looking to create a little bit of separation here. IUP has been a really good third quarter football team. They've scored a lot of points in the third quarter, and that was something they really harped on. They've scored 101 points and outscored opponents 101 to 48 in the third quarter of play so far this year. That was something they harped on after the Kutztown game is to, to really come out and be a better team in the second half. So here's Lenny Williams and the IUP offense back on the field. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in all year long to the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. And again, it's Temple. He's stuffed after a pretty short gain. Weichelt was in to make the tackle. And uh, look at some defensive stats for both teams here. Josh Weichelt's had six tackles in the uh, first half here. That led all tacklers. They had a game high six tackles. So he continues to produce the man in the middle. Enrico Wright, the injured secondary uh, safety for Gannon had five tackles in the first half. He's not back on the field thus far, so it does not look like he will be returning this afternoon. Brock Jones was also hurt. Williams keeps it on the zone read. Williams jukes past one man and is suplexed down to the turf. Somebody all upset on the in the booth here right beside us, the coaches. But uh, Justin Brown made the tackle, and Lenny just baited the defense in once again. That'll be an IUP first down. Well, Gannon defensively, Jeremy Page was in the backfield. They had an opportunity to stop Williams for a loss or a very short gain, but Williams was able to use that athletic ability once again to get around the edge and get past the defender and pick up a first down. It's a great look at the red shirt freshman quarterback. Williams will throw it, and there's another completion to Swanee Brown. This time he breaks a tackle and steps out of bounds. Swanee Brown, that's really been the IUP passing attack with the exception of that long pass play to uh, Walt Pegues. It's been all Swanee here so far today. And again, Brown taking advantage of the opportunity. Resner, the cornerback for Gannon, giving him about a 10 to 12 yard cushion on the outside. And Williams, easy pitch and catch. Brown is able to make the defender miss and then turn down field for a 20 yard gain. It's a 24 yard gain officially to the Gannon 40. And IUP is driving here in the second half of play after a couple of first downs. Give it to Temple up the middle, and you could see how Gannon was concerned about Lenny Williams there. And Temple takes the space available to him and picks up a nice gain on first down. IUP back to the line, and they do have the two tight end set, if you want to call it that. Rex Spears is more of an H-back uh, than anything, but Kevin Edwards is also a tight end in the football game. Number 84 in Crimson. Two wide sets and another shotgun set for Lenny Williams. Second down and four. Handoff right side to Temple. He dances his way for an IUP first down. 
Sanders made the stop, but the Crimson Hawks pick up another first down here in the second half. Nice run by Temple. Patient run as well. They're able to cut up field at the right time, pick up that first down. IEP's offense moving very nicely to start this second half of action. Slippery Rock beginning to pull away from clearing. It's now 30 to seven, Rock on top. So IUP will have to hope for just a share of the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference Western Division. Williams keeps it, breaks a couple of tackles, but can't break the other one there as uh, Matt Astorino made a really nice play, an open space, open field tackle on Williams Astorino, the senior from Edinburgh, Pennsylvania. Nice athleticism by Astorino in the open field. It's easy to make, Williams does a nice job of making defenders miss in that type of a situation, but Astorino, nice job using his athletic, athleticism to stick with Williams and bring him down. And talking with Coach Brad Rizicki here over the course of the week, he mentioned how one-on-one -on -one tackling is going to be very important for this Gannon defense. Another handoff to Temple, and it looks like he slipped on the play there. The linebacker, Mendieta was there to make the tackle, but IUP now dealing with a third down, and here comes Luigi Listabrinza into the football game. Remember last year, he was the guy, you know, over 800 yards rushing as a freshman. Temple was kind of emerged as the, the top rushing option for IUP, though. Yeah, and Listabrinza's battled some injuries this mm -hmm. year as well, which has really hampered his production, and Temple's just stepped up and, and become a big-time player in this offense under new offensive coordinator Marty Higgins. Gannon's looking for a stop here on third down. Williams will throw. Blitz coming, and it's incomplete. Good defensive call, sending the blitz, and Matt Astorino was there closing in on Lenny. He had to get rid of the football quickly. Yeah, throws a little short, but you talked about it. You touched on it, Josh. Astorino with a nice job coming up on, on the blitz from the same position. As you can see him here coming from the left side of your screen and put Williams on the ground after the throw. Williams had to get rid of the football a second before he wanted to. Crimson Hawks are going to keep the offense on the field here on a fourth and eight. IUP will look to pick up this first down here on the first possession of the second half. Gannon's 0 for 1 on fourth downs. We'll see if the Crimson Hawks can go 1 for 1 here. Williams on a play action. Ducks past one man. He's going to keep it. Steps up, throws, and it's incomplete. No penalty flag. The IUP coaches wanted it. Pretty good coverage by A.J. Satcher. They were looking for Mims and Brown, who were both down there, but a turnover on downs for the Crimson Hawks. Nice job defensively by Gannon. Able to get enough pressure on Williams where he had to run around the pocket. Still had time to make a throw up to the end zone. But over the head of Brown and good coverage by Gannon's defensive backfield there. Nice job forcing the turnover on downs. And Trenton Donald was the man. You saw number 50 on your screen who forced the issue. Gannon, they've got some new uniforms as well. Bit of a sleek, futuristic look for the Golden Knights here. Phillips is in the game. And there's Brock Jones. He was injured just at the end of the first half. He's back and it looks like he's picking up right where he left off. That's Brock Jones. Yeah, Jones is a very talented running back. Gannon, it's all time, excuse me, uh, set the all time mark for season single, single season rushing yards a year ago and 14 rushing touchdowns this year as well. We talk about Temple and his 15 rushing touchdowns coming into today, but Jones, second in the PSAC with 14. Another shotgun set, another handoff to Brock Jones, and Jones has blockers in space. He's dropped after he picks up a first down, but a flag comes in from the umpire. And we have a penalty flag. Holding, number 75 offense, 10-yard penalty, second down. And that will negate a first down run by Brock Jones, but Brock Jones is coming in the second half and has looked pretty nice on a couple of carries. See and the jersey pull there. Yeah, they get the hold on Brock as he was holding Darian, Dorian Lane, the linebacker coming across the middle at the end of the play, too. You hate to see that if you're again. Yeah from the Gannon perspective, a play or a, a hold coming at the end of the play after the play has pretty much been decided at that point. Yeah, Jones had already picked up a first down in the rise motion here. They'll hand it off to Jones again. Cuts in the hole. He's got his left ankle taped. You see the left ankle was heavily taped there for Brock Jones, and he made some pretty nice moves uh, laterally there on that ankle. 
Well, Jones is a senior, so his next to last game of his career. It's good to see he's able to come back from that injury and, and make a contribution here in the second half. And third down and about one, one and a half. This is an opportunity for Jones to keep it on the ground, but then do they let Phillips go ahead and put it in the air here? Gannon, one of seven on third down so far today. They need one here. And they'll hand it off to Jones again. And second effort probably gets Jones a first down. IUP had stuff him initially, but the senior tailback would not be denied there, Eric. A nice second effort and also a big push from the offensive line when Jones got stood up, able to push him forward about two yards, just enough to get that first down and keep his drive alive for Gannon. Gannon is driving. IUP was unable to convert on their first possession after turning the ball over on downs, and now Gannon is trying to work their way into the end zone here. Zach Phillips, Liam Nodler started the game, and I think it was just to get his start streak intact. Phillips keeps it on the left side. Phillips with running room. Bumped out of bounds late, and there's a flag. So they're going to tack 15 onto it, and Phillips looks a little worse for where there is Eric Williams bumped him out of bounds. Yeah, late hit by Williams. Phillips was already out of bounds by the time that he put him into the sideline, and it's on the Gannon sideline, so you know it's going to get a lot of emotion and tripping from that bench, and two officials threw the flag on that play. Looks like Phillips is okay, but he really took a shot. After the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, number seven defense, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic first down. That's going to take the football well into IUP Crimson Hawks territory. They're going to mark it off 15 yards from midfield, and there's the shot. The staff wanted it, they got it. So another 15-yard penalty for IUP. There was a couple. Remember, Crimson Hawks had some penalties in the first half as well. Well, on that touchdown, from, for Jones, you had Aquino Robertson with an unsportsmanlike conduct foul. Gave Gannon a first and goal with a four. They punched it in with Jones. And here you are now, another 15-yard penalty, this time on senior Eric Williams. Yeah, double tailback set here. Phillips will keep it, but IUP's there. Jamal Everett and Matt Moad, who was finally cleared to play and is in the football game for the first time in a couple of weeks, made the stop. Matthew Moad. It's good to see him back. Remember, he had that pick six against Kutztown. Talented young defensive lineman battled some injuries this year, causing him to miss three games thus far, but it's good to see him back on the field, as you alluded to. So the Crimson Hawks shift here. Eric Williams is a safety, but he looks like he's more of a linebacker here. Crimson Hawks sending guys, showing pressure, trying to confuse the freshman quarterback. It's Jones up the gut. Jones is just tripped up there as Robertson wrapped on to the legs of Jones, and he had to hold on for dear life there, Eric, because Jones had space if he breaks that tackle. Nice blocking up front by Gannon's offensive line, and IUP bringing the run blitz. Crimson Hawks trying to make substitutions here. They've got to, they've got to get the troops off the field. They do. Trips formation to the near side for the Golden Knights. Gannon hasn't had to throw the ball a ton. It's been running with their freshman quarterback. And IUP looks like they're kind of lined up in a man-to-man -man here. You see right across the board the matchup. Franco and Williams. Gannon, they have to burn a timeout here because the play clock was winding down. They'll do just that. So as Gannon calls a timeout, we'll take one with them here. 7.20 to go in the third quarter. We've got a good one brewing here at Miller Stadium. We'll be right no back. Little voice came on the phone. Daddy, when you come home, he said the first thing that came to his mind. I'm already there. I'm already there. Take a look around. Oh, I'm already there. Being there. Pass it on. Crimson Hawks are trying to be there on the defensive side of the football here and get a stop on third down. You look at it, it's probably outside of field goal range here, Eric. It would be a really long field goal attempt if Gannon doesn't pick up a first down. So they need to pick up a, you know, some yardage here on third down and they've been doing it with their running game. You look at the, the numbers here, IUP has 163 yards on the ground. Gannon has 106. Uh, 34 plays for Gannon, 45 for IUP. So 
Both teams have moved the football. Gannon is trying to uh, continue this drive. It's their first of the second half, and it's been a, a drive that has spanned some time here. So it's a third and three. Crimson Hawks loading up the box. Look at this, almost everybody in your frame there. Eric Williams, the lone safety. They put the ball in the air. The pass is complete. Nice work by Gannon. The freshman fires complete to Brandon Mansell, and Gannon moves fast. Nice recognition by Phillips on the snap. He saw the blitz coming. Mansell ran the hot route on the outside. He was able to put it right on the money, and Mansell falls down, but able to pick up the first down. And at some point, you start to wonder, is Gannon, when's Gannon's going to run that play action? When are they going to do something to set up that pass play? Because IUP is continually putting eight to ten men in the box to stop that run. They don't have any respect or at least fear the passing game of Phillips. First and ten, handoff to Jones, up the gut. And he's swarmed in there, the IUP defensive line, up to the task. Dylan Scott is a defender who was activated last week at Clarion because IUP's depth was a little bit tested here. So a short gain here. Gannon set to run their ninth play of the drive. And Gannon's taking their time. They're being very patient with the football. Even though they're down by two scores, you still have enough time where you can execute your offense with it. You want we're only halfway here through the third quarter. Ham is lined up to the top of the screen. He's matched up on the freshman, Mikhail Makel. So a tough task for the freshman. Ham has been quiet. You have to think he's going to get involved there and Gibson blew through the line and we'll see if he was drawn off. Offside, number 93 defense, five yard penalty, second down. That is on Karan Gibson, and you, you saw Karan there. He just blew right through Kyle DePiro, the tight end who was lined up. Uh, it was close, but Gibson is offside, and that's given Gannon free yardage. Obviously can't do that. They're continuing this long drive here. It's spanned over three minutes and 30 seconds here in this quarter. And it takes it from a second and eight now to a second and three. Much more manageable situation for Gannon. High snap. Gannon has to recover it, and Moad is there in the backfield. Phillips had to just try to corral the football, and by the time he did, the IUP defense was all over him. There's, there's been multiple bad snaps today by both teams, really, but especially by Gannon. Look at center Brady Bowling, a freshman, with the high snap to Phillips, and Moad did a nice job reacting off the line, used his quickness to get in the backfield, and with that high snap, and Moad being in the backfield, nothing for Phillips to do but go down and protect the football. So it's now a third down in 10. And again, they're right on that edge of field goal range here at the Division II level. I'm not sure the range there of, of the kicker, but see if they can pick up a first down. Phillips steps up, throws, and there's the aforementioned Justin Ham. He makes his first reception of the day. He's gonna be marked just shy of the first down, a couple of yards shy. Kevin Clark made the stop for the Crimson Hawks. Now, interesting decision here for Gannon. Clearly, they're going to go for it. Fourth down, about four yards to go. IUP did a nice job of bottling up Ham, the second all-time leading receiver in Gannon history. His first catch of the afternoon not coming until the five-minute mark of the third quarter. IUP trying to pump a little noise into the building here. Fourth down, Phillips throws. It's almost intercepted. Watkins and Clark converge on the talented Ham, and both teams trade turnovers here to start the second half. IUP turns the ball over on downs. Gannon does the same. Nice job defensively by IUP forcing the turnover. Gannon not able to convert. Had a nice drive. Just not able to convert and throwing in a double coverage. Watkins read that all the way. Phillips looking for Ham. Watkins does a nice job of stepping in. Kevin Clark there as well. So a low percentage pass from Williams. It's another pass breakup for Jay Watkins. It's what he's done all year long. He is the leader in the PSAC and pass deflections this season. Here comes IUP. It's a design quarterback run. Lenny Williams has got nowhere to go. And this Gannon defense, Joshua Weichel leads the charge. The Golden Knights defense. Have to give them a ton of, ton of credit for shutting down IUP, relatively speaking, so far today. Well, they've done a nice job, especially up front. 
They've contained the big plays from IUP. We talked about it coming into today. IUP had 43 plays this season of 20 yards or more. And I, again, has done a nice job of containing IUP's offense, not giving that big play. We saw the big play to Pegues in the first quarter, the 54-yard touchdown pass. Yep. So it's not as if they've eliminated the big play, but they've done a nice job of keeping them contained. Pass is tipped and almost intercepted. Weichold had a chance at it, but the defensive backs who have been playing in the backfield a lot of the time, Mike Zanders was there, he got a hand on it. And we talked with Coach Ryzicki here, Brad Ryzicki, and he said that they want to make the IUP offense work, pick up three yards, five yards, seven yards, and make them work the ball down the field as opposed to those big plays. If they can do that, they, they thought they really had a chance, and, and they've kind of forced that with the one play that you mentioned, the 54-yard touchdown pass, but Gannon's done a nice job. It's a third down, IUP's backed up. Got trips to the far side of the field. Williams will keep it, and he tries to make a move, and a nice tack when open space made by Mike Xanders. He does it again. Xanders has been flying all over the place for the Golden Knights, the junior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Nice tackle in the open field, bringing down Williams. Not much space there for Williams. They flushed him out, Gannon did to the sideline. And now IUP having to punt from near their own end zone. Gannon should end up with pretty good field position. His ham lined up at, the, at his own 45, and he's dangerous. He already has yes. one punt return for a touchdown this season. Yeah, we'll see if they punt it to him. Here, Spangler sends a high one. End over end is fair caught. Not, uh, Gannon will get some good field position off of it. 3.24 to go in the third quarter. We're rolling along. We do want to remind you to um, get connected with us here on social media. Various social media outlets, facebook.com slash Sports. Live stats are available for this game at IUPathletics.com, and of course, on Twitter, live updates provided from the IUP Crimson Hawks on Twitter as well. So, plenty of ways to get connected here on this web stream. It's a digital world, so take advantage of all the platforms IUP has available to you. First and 10, Gannon with some good field position again. Quarterback draw, and Phillips is absolutely uh, leveled there, wow. Kevin Clark, came in and, and said hello to Mr. Phillips. Physicality, nice job. That's the word to describe Kevin Clark, team's leading tackler this season, does a nice job, recognizes the play, and Phillips going in and just oh absolutely gets planted. Oh, my. By Clark. But the freshman, he's a tough guy. He's taken a couple of shots in this game, especially running down the sideline. He did draw that 15-yard penalty on the previous drive. Not bad at all. And we've got some miscommunication here. The ball might not have been snapped in time. I think got a false start. 36 offense, five yard penalty, second down. Yeah, and Eric, that was a case where the entire offense went, but the ball wasn't snapped, so we're gonna blame the center on that one. Yep, miscommunication coming out of the huddle. And now that moves Gannon back, and now you're looking at a second down. It goes from second to nine, now you're looking at a second and 14. And when you're down two possessions on the road, those are the types of penalties you can't make at the end of the third quarter. Brock Jones is the tailback in the football game right now. He's got 16 touchdowns on the year. We've got another stoppage here from the officials. What do we have? Maybe an issue with the clock. Yeah, they're going to wind it here. So just a kind of an administrative issue there. Jones has 38 yards on the day. And he'll get it this time. And Jones is into IUP territory. Moad and Clark combined for the tackle. And it's getting chippy. Look at this. There's some trash talking, some pushing and shoving. And this is becoming, like I said earlier, a rivalry that's brewing. Because you remember IUP, they've got a little bit of revenge on their mind. The scenarios were kind of flipped last year. Gannon had a chance to win the West. They did that after defeating IUP 31-21 at Erie. Now... Crimson Hawks trying to win a share of the PSAC West. So the roles reversed in a sense here. Third down for Gannon. Phillips rolls to his left. Pressure coming. Moat's closing down. Phillips lets it go. He's got a man wide open. It's caught. That's a touchdown for the Golden Knights. Brandon Clemensick makes the play. Clemensick, touchdown Golden Knights. The coaches are all fired up. Nice play. They roll the pocket out. To the left, Phillips able to put the throw right on the money as he, as the wide receiver, Clemensic, got behind Mackley on the, from the IUP. 
Phillips put the ball right on the money. And now you look at it, now it's a 20 to 13, possibly 20 to 14 ball game. It's a one possession game. And all those lost opportunities in the first half for IEP are coming back to haunt them. The Golden Knights are crawling their way back and Coach Tortorella can't believe it. Extra point is good. Here come the Golden Knights. Don't look now, ladies and gentlemen, 20 to 14. We'll be back on IUP TV. Students in communications media at Indiana University of Pennsylvania can focus on a variety of areas, including media promotions. Our promotion students learn their skills by working in a hands-on environment, gaining real-world experience. They learn how to use media to promote, produce and manage events, and how media organizations operate. They create promotional campaigns and help clients pitch their services, products, and events. With excellent classes led by experienced teachers, the Communications Media Department at IUP is perfect for students interested in media promotions. We have so much to celebrate in Division II, but we're especially proud of our commitment to make a wish. Division II student athletes have led a 10-year initiative to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions. Nearly $3 million have been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple. Because we care. We're back on the Crimson Hawk Sports Network. Gannon strikes with a three-play, 49-yard drive, making it 20 to 13. Gold Knights have cut into this lead here. Pegues will return it. Pegues past the 30, breaks a tackle, spins his way, and he's down at the 30-yard line. But uh, football season coming. We want to look at men's basketball as well. Of course, here at IUP, that's a big deal. Look at the men's basketball upcoming schedule. And Eric, a chance for fans to go out and see the reigning NCAA Division II national finalist. Yes, at home against Urbana University, at home against Bowie State University, and then on the road at Mercyhurst, who was picked to win the PSAC West this basketball season, even though IUP is ranked number seven nationally and the only PSAC team to be ranked Interesting. in the top 25. Absolutely. Mercyhurst has been chosen by the media as the prevent, uh, potential Western Division champion. Yeah, you saw the Western Division preview at halftime, and it was interesting. I walked in, I got an email from Brandon Norfleet. He had practice today. He was supposed to be on the sideline for us, but he had practice, so he had double duty. Here's Sean McVay making a reception, and McVay picks up a first down. But uh, you look, going back to that touchdown for the Golden Knights, it was a 48-yard pass play from Phyllis to Brandon Clemensick, and uh, IUP, a team that likes to play a lot of man. Whenever you have a ton of time to throw here, you see it. Look at all this time Phillips had to throw. It's hard for a freshman in Mikhail Makel to cover a guy for so long. Uh, they trust the guys to do their job, but sometimes, you know, the other receivers, they are going to do what they have to do to get open as well. So it's a handoff to Temple. Temple gets past the initial surge, but then is dropped right at the marker. He needed one, and I think he got the one he needed. It is indeed a first down as we tick down under one minute to go. And Eric, don't look now, but the Gold Knights have cut it to a one-possession football game, just like that. Well, Gannon weathered the storm in the first quarter. They got down early 14-0. It could have been a lot worse, especially looking at opportunities that IUP missed in the red zone in the first half. But give credit to Gannon. Look, the defense has stepped up. They've held IUP just simply to two field goals since the first two possessions of the football game, and they've let their offense get back into it. Williams will throw. It's a straight drop. He looks right side. Diving catch is made and secured by Sean McVay. And the senior wideout is in on the action for another reception. Ball right at the 45 here with 30 seconds to go in the third quarter of play. We've been back and forth. And Eric, we really thought this game, like you said, would maybe kind of turn IUP's direction the way they started. It's been a game of runs here so far. IUP up 20 to nothing, but then the Golden Knights have stormed back with two straight touchdowns to make it 20 to 13. And I think IUP is just going to let the third quarter expire. So you want to throw up those four fingers, ladies and gentlemen, because we have got a real good one here at Miller Stadium. 20 to 14 is your score. We'll be back with the final quarter of play here in the home portion of the schedule right after this on IUP TV and the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. I fell in love with the campus, with the people, with my IUP life.
see it for yourself. Visit us. Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Find your success. Success. We see it every day. Hundreds of majors and programs, bachelor's degrees to PhDs, small classes, internationally known faculty who are committed to your success. Real world experiences to guide you on your career and life path. An alumni network 120,000 strong. I'm IUP President Mike Driscoll. Visit us. Find your success at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. We are back to start quarter number four here on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. We'd like to thank everyone for tuning in all year long. It's been a really good year of IUP Crimson Hawks football, and we'd like to thank our hardworking crew for making it happen, really. Second down, Williams floats one to Pagese, and he makes the catch. Ball comes out. What are they going to call there? Is that a catch and a fumble, or is that an incomplete pass? The referees both removed their hats, signaling, signaling that he stepped out of bounds. And Coach Signetti is all riled up. Incomplete pass. Here we go. Coach Signetti needs to be careful here. The referees had thrown their hat offs, right? That Eric, that's signaling that the guy steps out of steps bounds, out of right? Bounds, correct. Okay. Wow. Really good touch by but Lenny there, but pretty good timed hit for sure. It did look like Pegues had the football and made a couple steps and Signetti completing his case and the officials are going to get back together a second time yeah. to discuss what happened. Here we go. Did Walt catch this football? Yeah, one, one, two. two. It's, it's close. It's very close. It's a bang, bang. And they don't get a chance to slow it down like we're yeah. doing right now. But they're not going to give it to you. Nope. So it's a third down and IUP will need to pick it up again. But uh, even though if he had caught that football, he stepped out of bounds. He stepped so out of bounds beforehand. Catch, yeah. So he's, he was not an eligible receiver at that point anyway. Yeah, I agree. We've got a timeout. So IUP will call a timeout. Let's take one with them, get things sorted out, come back with this third and five. It's a big one for IUP. We'll be back on the Crimson Ox Sports Network. Can I go to the sleepover? Lucy, I want you to promise me something. If there's any drinking, I want you to say, no thanks, not my thing. Mom. I promise you, your real friends won't care. Deal? I promise, Mom. They really do hear you. Did you pack your toothbrush? For tips on how to start the talk, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. A public service message from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. Welcome back into the Crimson Hawks Sports Network here. Final quarter of play. IUP has really made sure that they were a good second half team, but right now they're being outscored 14 to nothing. Eric, here's the by quarter scoring for the Crimson Hawks. You look at what they did in that third quarter. They've outscored opponents 101 to 48, but it's been pretty close in the fourth quarter here. Crimson Hawks will need a good one to secure a victory here today. Well, you look at that 101 to 48 difference in the third quarter, that speaks to coaching and halftime adjustments coming out and fixing mistakes from the first half and adjusting to the scheme defensively that's being thrown at you. So nice job with the recognition, but thus far today, it's seven nothing Gannon in the, in the second half. So Williams will hand it off to Temple on a third down and he's not gonna get it. Who else would it be? It's Josh Weichelt. And Gannon has a coach over on the left side that is really into it. And we've been having a, a little bit of fun with him here. He's uh, showing some passion here and IUP has to make a decision Fourth down, clock's winding. What are they going to do? And I think they're going to punt it away. Yeah, you have to punt it away here. You can't give Gannon the football on your side of the field. If you still have a possession lead or six-point lead, if Gannon, you give the Gannon the short field, they go down, score that touchdown, kick the extra point, and all of a sudden they're ahead by a point. Ham is back to return. He's dangerous. It's a high punt. Forces a fair catch. Really nice punt. Fumble! It's fumbled! IUP picks it up. They're going to get the football. Shades of what happened at Slippery Rock, Eric. Walt Pegues fumbled the football, gave Slippery Rock the ball, and now IUP will get it in the red zone and special teams. This time works to the Crimson Hawks' favor. Who would have thought? Nice punt. Good hang time. And plenty of time for him to adjust. He called for the fair catch. Just simply muffed the punt. Went right through his hands. And Aquino Robertson right there to pick up the fumble. And now IUP's in business inside the 10. Right through his hands. Heard footsteps, maybe. And that, ah, that's, a, that's a big move. Wow, that really is. They're going to look back on that, regardless of what happens. 
because that's a possession taken away for the Golden Knights. Temple has the football. He's down near the five yard line. Chris Temple running with the ball. Jeremy Page closed in and made the stop. It's also a situation where momentum had swung over to the Gannon side. And now with that fumble, it swings right back over to IUP. Right up the gut. Temple stopped once again. Gannon defense. Bending, but not breaking so far here in the red zone. Talked about how important the red zone is. Chris Temple got the ball the first two times. It's third and goal. We'll see if he gets it again. The sophomore tailback already has 16 touchdowns on the season. Hand off again to Temple. A second effort. Is he in? They're going to be marked just short. That's, wow. It looked like from up here, I think Temple may have reached the, broken that plane there. We'll have to take another look. Here's a good, good shot at it. Oh, boy. He was never down, right? Is his knee down here? It looks like he's on top. Oh, boy. I think that showed, I think that said all you need to see. The IUP sideline, of course, was signaling touchdown. We had a good view up here, so did the coaches. So we've got to stop it, you're still talking. 30 defense, penalty enforced half the distance to the goal. Replay third down. They call it offsides, okay, interesting. Chris Temple looked like he was in the end zone. He stopped short, apparently. IUP gets it, it's third and goal. We'll see if they can punch it in this time. Clock winding now under 13 minutes to go. And the Crimson Hawks are trying to expand upon this six point edge. It was a great start to the game for IUP. Gannon has crawled their way and fought back in tremendous fashion. And now IUP has a chance to put a touchdown on the board. Temple, fumble, and Gannon picks it up, wow! My goodness gracious, Foster Resner picked it up. Cannon has the football. This is absolutely wild. It's a turn of events for sure. Gannon gets the stop, forces the turnover, avoids disaster after the buff punt. Hey, look, it's a simple handoff to Temple. He has the football. He's going in and a nice As play defensively it. from Logan. Wommelsdorf, nice play by him, knocking the ball out of Temple's hands. And Reznor right there to pick it up and to take it upfield. Yeah, you see Wommelsdorf as Temple tried to extend the ball past the, the pylon, past the goal line there. All you have to do is break the plane. It was knocked away and no harm, no foul for the fumble. Wow. And momentum now swings back again. The pendulum swings towards Gannon. Back and forth we go at Miller Stadium. Play action pass, and it's incomplete. Pretty good coverage by Allen Wright. Matched up against Ham, and they're jarring a little bit. Wright needs to be careful. Don't want to talk too much and grab yourself a personal foul. He's already got an unsportsmanlike conduct today. My goodness, we are, we are seeing a good one. No doubt about it. Well, Phillips had a good recognition. He had his man. He had Ham up Much the sideline, but the throw was just in the zone enough where Wright was able to come back and make a play on the football. Ham 6'3", Wright 5'11". And they hand it off. A little bit of slippage there. Johnson, Tyler Johnson running with the football. Another no. third down, right, Eric? Yep, yeah. this sets up a big third down. If IUP is able to get a stop, you force Gannon to punt from their, own, from their end zone, and you would think set up good field position for IUP. But if you're Gannon now, you have to trust your quarterback, Zach Phillips. He is a freshman. He struggled somewhat today, but he does have a big pass play for a touchdown. We saw that last quarter. Can he make another big play here on third down? Gannon's 4 of 11 on the day. They need one here. Phillips will roll to his right. He's chased. Phillips hit, and he has to get rid of it. So it's incomplete, and the pressure was on for Phillips, who had to roll to his right. They rolled him to his right, and the pressure closed in quickly. So here's a situation where Gannon needs to get off a good punt because, well, they're backed up. So in a game like this, every play begins to become magnified a little bit. You can see what Gannon's game plan is. Phillips is much more comfortable as he's rolling out of the pocket. So they did a nice job trying to roll him out to the right, but just 
The problem with that is then you're cutting off about half of the field for the players or for your receivers. So it makes it a little bit easier for IUP's defense. They only have to cover a half of the field. Jared Morrison, Karch Holland, the dual punt unit. This is just an interesting look for Gannon. They have a couple of punters there. See if IUP sends some pressure. It's partially blocked. It's partially blocked there. And IUP is going to get phenomenal field position. So that rugby style punt comes back to bite the Golden Knights. IUP will get it back. And wow, so many different momentum swings in this game. There's Paul Tortorella. He is not happy. So the IUP offense will again have an opportunity to put points on the board and again expand on this six point lead. If you're IUP, you want to keep the football on the ground here, probably with Chris Temple. Look for Williams running that option read. And you have to get some points on the board here if you're IUP. You want to try to extend this out to a two possession football game as we approach the 11 and a half minute mark. Temple is over 100 yards on the day. His average isn't great for what he's used to, but he has it right now. And Temple cuts back up the middle, and it's dropped inside the 10-yard line. Some nice running by Chris Temple, and he's got over 100 yards, like I said, and he's got another IUP first down on that run. And once he cleared that line, there was nobody around him. You can see Gannon brings the blitz, they're not able to get there. As you see, Astorino missed on the tackle. Temple was able to take advantage and get upfield. So it's a first down for the Crimson Hawks here inside the 10. Temple again dances his way inside the five yard line. Second effort gets him down to about the two. So again, IUP is knocking at the door. Diamond Jones blocked that punt on the special teams play. I had to make sure that the number was correct, but it was Diamond Jones and he's been really a special team standout for IUP. We wanna certainly give him credit where credit's due there. Second and goal for IUP. Shotgun, Temple is stopped short. He was stood up. Coach Signetti wants a touchdown and it looked like, yes, his progress was stopped. So Temple short once again and Gannon, time after time, they're stuffing IUP's offense. They've done a nice job keeping contained, although he does have over 100 yards, but nice push up front defensively. Astorino in there making a play. Again, from his safety spot, he's done a nice job stuffing the run. High snap, Gannon can't pick it up. Temple recovers, and IUP may be able to get a field goal out of this. Oh, my goodness. If Gannon was able to pick that up, I think they score a touchdown on easily, it. Easily, easily. Oh, my. Very fortunate that they weren't able to pick that up as Justin Brown unable to pick it up and go. New center. Well, Kenneth Waldice is typically the center, but... You know, it was it was Ed Byer in at center. So Waldice and Byer switch at center every once in a while, and that was a bad snap. So Stu will come on here to attempt this field goal, and you knew it would come down to a special teams play. It's a big one here. And again, be careful, 88 Chris Dollard from Gannon already with two blocked kicks this year. Let's see if he's able to make a difference on this play. It's a good snap, a good hold. Stu steps into it, and it is no good. He missed it. Ryan Stewart, the special team's woes continue. Let's step out for 30 and come back with the Gannon Drive. We'll be back on IUP TV. It's hard to explain. It just became home. There are hundreds of majors and programs, bachelor's degrees to PhDs, small classes and faculty that really get to know you. Amazing internships and everywhere, programs that help to find a job that is right for you. It's what IUP is about, a commitment to your success. See it for yourself. Visit us, Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Find your success. Phillips has it on the quarterback keeper and Phillips picks up a first down. So IUP, you look at it, Eric, a couple of red zone possessions, they come away with zero points at all. Fumbles uh, have just been an Achilles heel and this is, this is really just something to behold here. So many momentum shifts, back and forth they go. It's just phenomenal. Well, the pendulum has swung in terms of momentum towards Gannon. You look at what Gannon has done 
very consistent, actually outgaining uh, gains, usually outgaining their opponents in total yards per game. But they kept playing. They didn't quit. Now look where they are. Play action. Phillips under pressure. Lane trips him up and makes the play. The speedy Dorian Lane is the senior here and one of the leaders on the IUP defense. He comes up with a big play. And really, at this point in the game, every play is a big play. Look at uh, Lane, though, close in and chase down Phillips. A nice job by Lane. You talked about it. Big, big play from the senior. Hey, big, big players make big plays. So nice job by Lane. And now you push them back. It's not second and 17. You're going to force Gannon to throw the football, which makes it easier for IUP. They can concentrate on that pass rush. Loss of seven makes it second and 17. Crimson Hawks have been so close to adding to the lead, but they haven't been able to do so. Phillips has to step up, and he's going to tuck the ball. Flag on the play as Phillips is dropped at midfield. So I think this one may be coming back here with a flag down on the play. And we've got some holding. Holding, number 67 offense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Remain so second Gannon down. Moving backwards. How, how wild was that? IUP had the ball on the one, two separate occasions. They didn't Zero even get points. a field goal out of it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Definitely missed opportunities that can come back to haunt you. And we looked earlier, just missed kicks, fumbles, unable to take advantage. Because Gannon's, I mean, the IUP really should have ran away with this football game in the first quarter. But you got to give Gannon credit. They stuck with it. They kept playing. And they put themselves in a position where they're not out of this football game and have an opportunity to take the lead. Crimson Hawks win this game. They get a share of the PSAC Western Division. Phillips will throw. He has a pocket, and he dumps it underneath to Jones. Watkins makes a nice play in space on the talented tailback, Brock Jones. So Gannon just trying to pick up some of this penalty yardage and make the third down a little bit more manageable. Still a tall hill to climb here with a third and long. This is where IUP, you can be conservative on defense. You can drop back your defensive backs. There's 22, third down and 19. So you can afford to, to drop back a little bit. Let, it, let Gannon catch the football in front of you and just make sure you bring them down. 19 yards is a long way to go. Five defensive backs in the game for the Crimson Hawks. IUP rushes three. Phillips has to step up. He's going to run it. Phillips up the gut. He's not even going to get close. So Phillips gets back to the initial line of scrimmage. And it's fourth down. So... The defense holds. Gannon will punt. Pagis will return. You always have to be weary of him. Can break a punt at any scenario. So we'll see if Gannon tries to punt it to him. You have to think the game plan was to punt it away from him. That's kind of what they've done so far today. Another rugby style punt running to his left and stepping into this one. Bounces at the 30 and Gannon will down it. Crimson Hawks will have the football here, 6.03 to go. And this would be one of those drives, Eric, you rely on the run, you try to kill some time, and you see if you can expand on this lead for Gannon. They've got to continue playing well defensively like they've done this entire second half. Well, this is the most important drive of the football game up to this point. You look at it for IUP, this could be a season-defining drive. They're still in, in control in terms of going to the playoffs. If they're able to control the football in this possession, go down and get points, you survive and advance to another week. But if you have to turn the football over to Gannon, it allows them to have the opportunity to take the lead and potentially win this football game. Keep in mind, it's a very uncomfortable six-point lead for IUP. Williams has it. Weichel chases him down. But a nice gain on first down for Lenny Williams. Six-point lead because if Gannon scores a touchdown and kicks an extra point, 21-20. So yep. certainly... And interesting, look at what's at stake here, Eric. It's really important for the for this uh, IUP team. Yeah, the win today for IUP would secure at least a share of the PSAC West title. Looks like Slipper Rock is going to hold on and beat Clarion at home. They are up big in the second half, so they will win the Western title and advance to the state championship game. So IUP next week will be playing still at Westchester University. Temple has the football. Now sets up a third and short. And it's still possible that the Crimson Hawks can play Cheney. 
in the final week of the season because if Slippery Rock wins, which it looks like they're going to, up 44 to seven, they would represent the West in the state game, the Western division in the state game. So still a couple of different scenarios that could play out, and that's what happens this time of year all the time because if one team wins, then it impacts the scenarios in a certain way. Same if another team wins. It's just depending on the results of these games. And it's a keeper for Lenny, and look at all the green grass. Leonard Williams, he's to the 10, he's to the 5, he's in. Who else would it be? The freshman has made plays all year and makes another big one touchdown, Crimson Hawks. Gannon gambled and lost, they came with the blitz, Williams. Able to get past that first line defenders, and he was gone on that option read. You can see the blitz, able to get around. Mike Zanders, who's had a very nice game for Gannon defensively, he overran the play, and Williams able to use that speed, takes it to the house. 64-yard run for Lenny Williams on the zone read, and we've got a flag. There was some jawing out there. Timeout, Indiana. That's their second charge. He takes a timeout with some confusion. So let's take one with them. My, oh, my. Lenny Williams, 64 yard run. We'll be back on IUP TV. Think of the NCAA as a marching band. We wouldn't stop with halftime, we'd be full time. Celebrating student athletes in everything they do. Okay, so don't think of us as a marching band. Think of us as a spirit squad. Well, just know we're always there for student athletes. Welcome back to the Crimson Hawk Sports Network and here's Chris Temple. It's been a big key to this game as has the freshman quarterback, Lenny Williams, really a Game-changing 64-yard touchdown run. He's got 140 rushing yards on the day. Temple's got 128. Crimson Hawks just continue to rack up the yardage on the ground. And going back to it, big plays is what has really kept IUP uh, able to stay in front here. The long touchdown pass to Begeese, the long touchdown run. And uh, Gannon's played well, but just some key plays for IUP at, at good times. And they'll send out the two-point conversion team here. This is... A, Kind of a smart idea here because it would put IUP up by two touchdowns. So we'll see uh, what offensive coordinator Marty Higgins draws up. Williams looking to throw to Swanee, knocked away. So it's incomplete. Let's step out once again here. 4.35 to go. It's 26-14 IUP over Gannon. We'll be back right after this. The brain is a remarkable organ. It's almost infinite in its capacity. Its ability to reach its full potential is limited by only one thing, the heart. For if the heart isn't fully engaged in what you're doing, if you have no drive, no passion, the brain will simply go through the motions. Find your success at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. We are back on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. Three plays, 72 yard drive for the Crimson Hawks. Sean Bowling will kick it away, 26-14. And as I say all the time, thanks to our crew, because a lot of people out here, it was a cold day, a windy day. Everyone in the control room and our faculty advisors, it's probably, it probably takes about 20 people to make this operation go, Eric. So uh, I know we're very thankful for everybody. Short kick is received. And IUP makes a play. 
That's Diamond Jones. He's been the special teams player of the game by far so far today. And he makes another one. Gannon has it. And uh, with a freshman quarterback in, throwing the ball will be coming at a premium here. And it's going to make it difficult for the Golden Knights. This is a situation Gannon wanted to avoid freshman quarterback on the road. Now all of a sudden you find yourself down two scores with just under four and a half minutes left to play. Phillips is going to have to put the football in the air. So look for him to roll out and try to execute a long pass play because Gannon needs to score the football quickly and they also need to get it back. Brock Jones is the tailback to the side of Zach Phillips. He's going to throw here. He has to step up because of the pressure. So he'll tuck the ball and run and Kevin Clark knocks him out of bounds. Nice gain on first down for Phillips. He had to put the ball in the air, but was forced to step up. Phillips will throw, and it looked like his arm may have got hit as he threw it there. It came out a little wobbly and falls incomplete. So another third down for Gannon here. It's third and four. And the Golden Knights are just running out of opportunities to, to get on the board. Yeah, third and four now. You talked about Josh running out of opportunities. Phillips just really had nowhere to go with the football. He was under pressure almost immediately, stepped up and got his arm hit as he went to throw it. Crimson Hawks rush three. And he's dropped. IUP only rushed three, but they still get the sack. That's Jamal Everett, the big guy, makes the play. And that's a fourth down. Now Gannon's going to be forced to go for it here. But Phillips, you can see, just not comfortable in the pocket. He has nowhere to go with the football. Forced to step up. It looked like he wanted to run it. And Everett with a nice job bringing him down, setting up a fourth and five. Gannon going to go for it here. So a big play for the IUP defense, who has stepped up a lot. Phillips throws and it's complete. Nice play, good timing. Justin Ham makes the reception and drops out of bounds. So that's a first down for Gannon and a pretty good play call by the Gannon Gold Knights there. A nice throw as well by Phillips. Good recognition, Ham break, breaks to the outside on his route and Phillips put it on the money. Ham steps out of bounds. Phillips forced to step up again and throws it nicely to Brock Jones. And that was a little bit unorthodox there. And Phillips looks like he's a little banged up here. Nice catch by Jones. One-handed catch by the running back. Able to pick up eight yards. But you're right, Phillips is tough. He's been able to hang in there in the pocket. Phillips throwing once again, flushed to the right, takes another shot and it's incomplete. Phillips is getting absolutely beat up here today. He's been hit and battered and bruised all day long. And uh, it's Liam Nodler, he was, he was hurt. So he started the game for the first play, but then he hasn't played the rest of the game here today. A nice pursuit by Moad from his defensive end position followed Phillips all the way to the sideline then made the hit as he released the football. But nice job again by the IUP defensive secondary, not giving Phillips an opportunity to throw the football to any of his receivers. We'll hear from head coach Kurt Signetti after this one in a 26-14 game. Brock Jones. Brock Jones, the ball carrier. Running the football, picks up a first down. And Kevin Clark made the tackle, but can get gets a first down at the 47 yard line. Phillips throwing, sets up a screen, and Moad undercuts Jones, and Jones is hurt on the play. Remember, he injured his ankle at the end of the first half, and he's looking hurt right now. Nice job by Moad. He's able to shed the block by Mitch Pagula. Offensive line again, and able to get around him, and even though he was down on the ground right here, he's still able to come up with the hip of the play and take out the ankles of Brown. Second down and 10 for the Golden Knights. Th 
throwing and it's intercepted. Jay Watkins seals the ball game for the Crimson Hawks, perhaps. Jay Watkins, he's been good. Really one defender that's been developing for IUP. Crimson Hawks have the football in game territory. Here's the replay. A nice job by Watkins. He recognized the route, jumped the route, stepped in front of Mansell and makes the pick. A nice play by Watkins, and that should basically seal the deal here. It's just over two minutes left to play. But a pretty disheartening loss for Gannon. He had so many opportunities to get back into this football game, and he just didn't take advantage of any of them, really, in the second half. Got back to within six points. And he looked back to that fumble by Temple that was almost returned back for a touchdown by Gannon. Brought down that's the difference. on the tackle, and that's absolutely been the difference in this football game. That play is almost like a microcosm of this game. So close. Temple has it and churns forward for a couple of yards there on first down. Crimson Hawks are able to get out of here with a victory, which it looks like they will. They'll move to 7-2 and two on the year, 6-1 and one in the PSAC Western Division. And this win, if they're able to get it, will give them a share of the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference Western Division. Gannon will drop to 6-4, and 3-4 and four in conference. So a disappointing year for the potential PSAC West favorites, at least preseason-wise they were. IUP in no hurry. And our crew is set to get that interview from head coach Kurt Signetti. I appreciate everybody scrambling to do that. Temple running with the football. He's going to be just short of the first down. And it's a timeout by Gannon. So let's take one with them. 114 to go in the Crimson Hawks home portion of the regular season. We'll be back right after this. We know you want family-friendly sporting events. Sporting events where you can be comfortable. And entertained in a positive environment. Watching great individuals and teams compete. With commitment, effort, and good sportsmanship. That's what the Division II Game Environment Initiative is about. Be a part of the excitement and find out why. These student athletes say with pride, I chose. I chose. I chose Division II. Crimson Ox Sports Network, so happy you've joined us all season long. And once again, would like to thank our crew, the entire senior class. There's a lot of seniors on this crew here that have uh, really dedicated their time and effort to providing you with this live video feed. And it's been a really good year of IUP Crimson Hawks football here at home. It is the last home game of the regular season for IUP. And the Crimson Hawks are just trying to run out the clock. Temple runs right into the pile. He stops short. So it's a fourth down and Gannon trying to conserve some time. They call a timeout. Or do they? Nope. Okay, they do. Okay, so it is a timeout. So it's the final timeout. Let's let's keep it here because the IUP Crimson Hawks really started this game off in a flurry, like a house on fire, the IUP Crimson Hawks were. They jumped out to an early lead in this game. If you just joined us, well, the game's almost over, so welcome to the broadcast. But IUP up 20 to nothing. They started out with a touchdown by Chris Temple. Lenny Williams threw to Walt Pegues for 54 yards, making it 14 to nothing. A couple of field goals by Stu, Ryan Stewart from 30 and 35, made it 20 to nothing. But then the Golden Knights countered back with a couple of scores on their own, a three yard touchdown run for Brock Jones, a 48 yard pass for Zach Phillips, made it 20 to 14. And there were a couple of instances where you really thought Gannon may even get out of here with a victory the way things were trending but then the 64-yard touchdown run for Lenny Williams certainly on third sealed down. the deal. It was on third down as well, yes. It was the, certainly the play of the game so far, and he's been our player of the game here today. He's our choice for player of the game. Temple on fourth and one, picks the first down up easily, then goes down very smart. We talked to him after that Cal game. He said, I had to just get down because I knew I didn't want to cost my team. And look at the Crimson Hawks again, always amped up after a victory, like I said at Cal. A lot of the same. Whole squad's in the building today. Oh. 
a share of the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference Western Division. Seven and two record for IUP. Sixth win in conference for the Crimson Hawks. 26 to 14. IUP just gonna knee the football down a little bit. The celebration is on and Coach Signetti says, let's calm down a little Ready? bit here, gentlemen. Let's take it easy. IUP was all riled up. I'm sure the celebration will be fun in the locker room as well. So we're down to 20 seconds here in the game and coaches are leaving, everybody's heading out. Gannon will close the year out at East Stroudsburg, November the 14th. IUP right now has Westchester. That's scheduled to change. They may get Cheney, but that's the final score. IUP 26, Gannon 14. And uh, let's see if we can get Coach Signetti. He's probably gonna shake hands and stuff, so we'll keep it here for just a little while as we close out our coverage of IUP Crimson Hawks football for the 2015 season. Again, thanks to the crew, everybody who's been here all year long. They were here at eight in the morning, Eric, to set up. Could you believe that? That's early. You're sitting in your bed all cozy, okay? And they're here setting up at eight in the morning. So they're the real MVPs. No doubt about it. Our MVP of the game is quarterback Lenny Williams. Here's Coach Signetti. Look back and ask you what your thoughts are about the defense. Our defense. Well, first, let's talk about winning the game. Well, I mean, that, that was, I'm giving the credit, defense to a, a lot of credit for it. First of all, it was like the, there was a monkey on our back or something, you know? We needed a win, and we were going to do, we just, like, couldn't cash in. And the defense uh, rose up you know, all the time. And uh, I thought Gannon played hard. And, you know, thankfully we found a way. Hold up. Uh, hang on, Jack. On the field. So we're gonna pause that interview momentarily, get everybody separated, shake hands, head to the locker room, and we'll pick this interview up in, in just a moment here. Look at this is a, uh, what a scenario here at Miller Stadium. So Coach Signetti sends the troops in. We'll pick this back up here in just a moment. And here comes the coach right now. So we'll send it back down to the field for part two of the head coach Kurt Signetti interview. I want to ask you about the defense. I was trying to give out, actually they played well. Did, it came up or stepped up when they needed to. But let me ask you something. I know it's difficult maybe impossible to give any single player a lot of credit, overwhelming the rest of the team. But Lenny Williams has absolutely done marvelous things this year, including today. Well, yeah, he's a major difference maker, and finally we found a way to get him loose at the end of the game when it counted. Well, the offense obviously started strong. There seemed to be a switch in momentum. We kind of went flat. What, was the, what happened? Got the ball in the red area, had a number of opportunities, couldn't cash in, some you know missed passes to receivers that were open, holding, stuff like that. And then it was like we'd get down there on the one, and you know I thought we were in a couple times, but it wasn't called. And then we're running in for a touchdown. We got a fumble, and then next time we snap the ball over the guy's head. So it was just consecutive errors. We missed a couple field goals again, and uh, but you know our defense wouldn't defense wouldn't budge. Good luck next week. There he is, head coach Kurt Signetti. Thanks to Stephanie Kepich for filling in for Brandon Northfleet and. Uh, Let's see if we have anything for Lenny Williams here. He was our player of the game. And here you go. Let's take a look at what Lenny was able to do today. Eric, 9 of 18 passing, 124 yards. But where he really did uh, his damage was with his legs. Take a look at his uh, rushing performance, Eric. Well, you mentioned it, and Coach Signetti mentioned it as well. He is a difference maker today. 15 carries, 140 yards on the ground, over 9 yards per carry. His fifth consecutive games or his fifth consecutive game eclipsing the century mark in terms of rushing yards. You put that together with Chris Temple, 142 yards on the ground. You're looking at 282 yards on the ground between the two of them. But Williams' big plays at the end on that fourth, excuse me, that third down late in the fourth quarter, able to spring loose and run for the long touchdown to seal this football game. But he did it both ways. He did it on the ground. He also did it through the air, the 54-yard touchdown pass to Big East in the first quarter. So definitely a difference maker for the IEP Crimson Hawks. Here's the big play there, the 60-yard touchdown run, and his performance puts Lenny right around the 1,000-yard mark rushing for the year. Uh, so very good, and we'd like to thank everyone for sticking it out with us, thank our crew. 
That's going to wrap it up for this season of IUP Crimson Hawks football. 26-14 victory. We'll be back in the spring for Crimson Hawks basketball, and we thank you for tuning in all year long, and we say good night. Until next time here on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. <laughs>